Are we friends? Okay, um, sort of a lot of things have happened. Uh, a friend of mine passed, uh, but that Sorry. was... Oh, no, no, no. I mean, these things happen, mm. and it just caused me to reflect a lot on sort of the quality of life and what I'm doing yeah. and everything. But um, in terms of how I'm doing in this space, I would say sort of the inverse almost. Mm. Um, I definitely... I didn't realize it would affect me so much. That's that last stream that I did yeah. on the chat logic situation. I really did not expect it to like really hit me so much, but it really did. And the whole context of that really got to me and just sort of has paralyzed me and sort of really mm. just stunted me in terms of even wanting to stream again. And I initially said to myself, I'm just going to take about like a week off to just cleanse. And then a week turned into two weeks and mm. then three weeks. And then lo and behold, fortunately, I didn't have internet for a few weeks. So that was another excuse. And I was relieved, actually. And then it's just since then, I just, I just, even though I set up and I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to stream today, I'm going to do this. I just can't. Yeah. And it feels so stupid just in my mind and in my head and I feel absolutely just imbecilic but I, I actually just I just I've really lost so much I've lost so much I think of what I thought was that I'd sort of found in mm. YouTube from this I thought that sort of being open and increasingly sort of trying to I guess find myself and be open about everything about myself the good and mainly the ugly not so good controversial all of that yeah I sort of thought you know I'm this is somewhere where I can do that and I think increasingly just especially from the beginning of this year onwards I've just realized that that's not really the case mm. um and that sort of building a brand is is not so much about authenticity um in as much as it's sort of about well the brand and yeah, building the expectation the, brand. the consistency yeah. of the brand yeah 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 and so i think coming to terms with that has been tricky and i i've i haven't really found this space to be incredibly accommodating for that exactly if that makes sense absolutely such a lived experience so relatable i think to so many people in this space and for people who are up to date uh i rewatched the stream today and basically even my memory of it was sort of similar to how i felt going through it but i think it felt even worse because you know i've been in the space for 12 years and i've had this happen a few times you just everyone's here for their own reason but mostly i think we are all socially so awkward and we don't know it so we keep thinking like everyone is more socially awkward than me. And I was like, nope, we're all socially awkward. That's why we all keep like misunderstanding each other. And that's why there's confusion. And as I'm watching this stream and I'm watching you stand up for yourself, honestly, I was invigorated in some ways. I was like, man, she's really coming with the receipts. She's standing up for herself. It feels so good to see it happen because even I've um, let myself down, I think, in a few ways of not standing up for myself. And then it looks like kind of messy when you try to do it after. But you just did it in the moment. You had the receipts. You were like, this is not okay. Do better. What gave you that strength? And like, how did you even have the like energy to do that and then get out there and do it? And then you just, you like left with kind of a slam dunk, honestly. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, good. I haven't watched it actually since mm. I recorded that yeah. live stream. So I, I'm not really sure. I was sort of running on adrenaline because I was really hungry. I was like, just not, I wasn't doing well, basically, yeah. physically. I was shaking. I was, it really, I can't believe it now, but it affected me so much. Yeah. And so I think... I think I just realized that nobody was going to stand up for me. And so I had to do it for myself. I just had yeah. to, I just had to, I mm. was the only one sort of in my court. And it was like, you know, this is just what I've got to do. Um, I think just even being quite like sort of melodramatic, I think in my life, it's always sort of been like me sticking up for myself or me mm -hmm. not sticking up for myself and dealing with the consequences of that. And so I sort of just had a choice and I just chose that one. I think the right 
route of things yeah. and of doing things. So I think it was mainly just a lot of emotions and I just wanted to be able to eat dinner again. Yeah. Um and I was I was I was angry. I was really angry and upset, um, genuinely. And I don't I'm not really good at expressing anger or knowing how to find an outlet for it. And right. so um I think a lot of the actual genuine anger that I felt, I sort of was able to somehow let it out just on stream, just mm -hmm. sort of a lot of, just a lot of everything inside of me just really wanted to just like let it out somehow. So yeah, yeah. It was um, amazing. Like it wasn't even, did you even really script it or sort of did script it? Because it was just so... It was live, but you were so concise and you just put it together and you had all these receipts. Like, was it in any way scripted? Um, only in so far as the Canva sort of slides that I had. Because yeah. Canva's, Canva's like the, the place where I just go whenever I need to do something. So, um, yes, it was in so far as that was concerned. Sort of, sure. I sort of knew what I wanted to say with each slide yeah, based on yeah. what was on each slide. So it yes, was amazing. It, I think you should probably rewatch it back and give yourself a little bit of pat on the back because it was really good. It was very clear. Oh, you know, it was really good. And I think you owe yourself a little bit of a reminder that you you really left with a slam dunk, in my opinion. Whether or not people believed you, I don't care about those people. But the comments are also very lovely on your video. People are very in support of you. You have, like, this whole community that's missed you. Even people in my chat are like, where's she been? I've been waiting for her. So, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. What happened, if you don't mind talking about it? with the chud logic and dk it, would you like to explain it to my audience so they're on the same page or do you want me to kind of like bullet point it i don't mind whatever you would prefer i, I would I love to hear mind. it from you personally um, all right okay um yeah i mean it's 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 really basically in my personal opinion a nothing burger really in terms mm. of what actually happened mm -hmm. um I was basically accused of like sexually harassing him and in that sort of basically this undertone of my having inappropriate interactions, unwanted interactions with male streamers on yeah. Twitter predominantly based on things that I say, based on my particular kind of humor or edginess uh, in terms of interacting and it didn't really make sense to me uh because it sort of felt like it was something that was being blown up um and basically this whole thing sort of started i got this email from chud logic do we know if it's chud now do we actually have a confirmation was it chud or not chud i've no idea i've completely just <laughs> i've i've ignored any Damn. sort of any interactions with anybody about that because yeah uh yeah um as i said i just wanted to eat i didn't <laughs> care i just wanted to like eat again and yeah. so you know I, I was like okay whatever but i got this email and it basically said okay woman i'm listening or something along those lines and i was a bit confused because i've known based on the other i think it was a couple of times that i had um sort of reached out to Chad Logic in mm -hmm. a sort of bantering British way that he'd ignored me or somehow indirectly, not even directly, but indirectly had said that he's not interested in talking to me. Hmm. Actually, it was from a mutual acquaintance, another okay. streamer who actually told me, just said, Head up, heads up, Chad doesn't interact with women because he's in a relationship. And so from then I hadn't spoken about him or spoken to him or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then I got this email. And so I didn't really know what to do because I wasn't going to contact him personally or anything like that because I'd heard about this problem um, and his private life. Mm -hmm. So I just tweeted it out as yeah. uh, a sort of like, haha, I think somebody's hacked your account, Chad. Uh, just basically so you know um and I didn't get the response that I was expecting I was sort of expecting either like 
just no response or just a, I don't know, maybe even like a thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, uh, thanks for bringing this to my attention or something. But um, yeah, I got a, just this back and forth, uh, a little like not really consistent back and forth with this person chad logic on the email yeah and so at that point i thought it was him because i didn't get a response from him on twitter um and only from this chad um and so it was just a very awkward situation and it basically ended in like at one in the morning his girlfriend was reaching out to me via other streamers saying that she needed to talk to me urgently and then in the same time after i said okay i'll talk to you i don't know why you need to speak to me about anything but okay yeah. he uploaded a video with a very suggestive and weird thumbnail i guess that's sort of like his signature thing and saying that i was like harassing him and everything and that i need to leave him alone um and so yeah it was just a whole thing did you ever talk really to his girlfriend to me no, because after the video went live, I saw yeah. it going live. And then for me, that made that sort of made sense why she wanted to speak to me so urgently. Oh, I see. And so I said, well, no, after like this thumbnail yeah. and this video, I, 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 why would I talk to you? I don't want to talk to you. Um, it just uh, the video is telling me to leave him alone, mm. but you're reaching out to talk to me. So I and don't thumbnail, really understand. That's the this. one with your breasts in it, right? <laughs> Yes, which is from another video of mine, which has nothing to do with anything. Uh, mm -hmm. It was uh, so okay. <laughs> so I gotta know because, like, obviously, look, I you know, Chad Logic follows me on Twitter, and I assume he does that in case I do anything that he wants to talk about and make content on. Like, I I know he doesn't follow me because he likes me. <laughs> like, okay, he's made horrible content about me in the past. Oh my gosh! So it's not like he's a fan, but um, it is one of those things where. What I'm trying to figure out is why did they target you? Like, why did Kid become a uh, content yeah i don't i don't actually know i had my own theory which uh according to other streamers is incorrect okay. but i haven't sort of i haven't like even thought about this or spoken about this at all um i only reached out to you sort of about like sort of wanting to sort of gain confidence in streaming again because I've yeah. just been sort of like really unable to since this whole thing. Um, but really fast, kid, hold on. Your camera has decided to become a robot and I'm not sure if it's me or if it's oh. you or if it's OBS. If my OBS crashes, I'm sorry, but it shouldn't, but it could. Oh. Well, we'd still be here, I guess, if my Discord froze. But like you are specifically oh. a robot. I have a frozen. Can yeah. you hear me? I can hear you. You are very, very like yeah i can audibly you're here could you oh, like okay. do you know how to like on discord just like turn off your camera and turn it back on let me see do if that. it helps um is that better yes hello welcome back okay, okay. it's probably Good. discord it's Good. been finicky okay i'm oh, so sorry i interrupted you. your th flow are you going to share your theory of why you think they targeted you are you comfortable with that i don't want to pressure you oh yes yes it's fine okay um yeah, I think, I think on Twitter, because I've said things, like I've said sort of things, I think there was sort of this like opportunity, I guess, to sort of farm content. Uh, and I think whoever emailed me, whether it was Chud Logic or not, who knows? I think they saw an opportunity to, I think I responded in a way that they didn't expect. They didn't expect me to expose this. I think mm. they thought that I actually had a thing for Chud Logic, yeah. which... I never have. I just think I say things like positive things about men in general. Like you have a nice smile. I sort of, you know, I try to look for the positive in just yeah. men in general. But it wasn't a specific thing about him. But I think whoever this was thought that this was a specific instance. And they expected me to have this clandestine conversation with this fake chart and we're going to make content about it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully involving some spicy emails and all of these sorts of things which didn't happen um which is why the conversation sort of really turned very hostile as soon as i had well hadn't actually responded i just tweeted out that email um 
at Chad. Mm -hmm. So yes, I think it was, I think it was sort of an opportunity because, uh, you know, I guess I am a bit weird on the internet um, or whatever. And so I think it was, I think it was just looking for content, uh, trying yeah. to farm content out of sort of, I guess, a low cow, something I like mean, that. I mean, look, you know? <laughs> I've seen people pull content out of like the simplest thing. And so again, like, okay, I want to talk to you about this because I think that this was a comment that gets circled around your name and even my name and everyone's name where everyone's like, oh, she's got a bit of the tism. And I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be real with you. I think if you're in this space, you're some variation of neurodivergent in some way, or maybe not, but like you have to be socially something to be an online person. Like, I just think it takes a very special kind of person to be here. And the idea that like Chud Logic or like if you ever see a group of streamers in a picture, I'm like, you all look autistic, bro. <laughs> like you look you all look like your mom dressed you for church like what are we talking about here like we all kind of have a vibe to us that says like hmm, do you function in normal society I was like ah what is normal <laughs> so I think it's kind of normal for us to misunderstand each other and to confuse each other and to be like you're not normal and you're an incel and I'm not an incel and you're this and I'm like okay everybody calm down obviously we're all weird but specifically it seems like you get targeted with this word almost like even in my own chat I mentioned your name and someone's like oh I think it is autism I was like what the fuck <laughs> what is this what is it do you have autism you don't have to tell us but like is that like is I mean know? I've never been diagnosed personally yeah. I don't even know how I'd go about getting diagnosed with anything yeah. really um yeah. I, I don't know how that entire process mm, works okay. unless I was to just do it myself sure but I've avoided doing that or anything like that um, that's fair even though I probably shouldn't because I do kind of want to, I would like to, like you say, like sort mm. of know everything about your brain and who you are like in yeah. this like one lifetime. I think I'm just very scared of what I might find out. And so I'd Fair. rather live in ignorant bliss at this point in time in my life. Um, but who knows, perhaps one day I will discover. I am... I mean, I, I guess there's probably some autism there or something there. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. It, it would surprise me if... You know, they said, you know, you're all fine. Um, yeah. That would be odd. But um, <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah, that does ring true to me. That sort of um, a bit of the tism. Or we're all just, I think we're just so weird. Like there's no way we're sitting here sharing our lives, making essays, whatever you do on the internet. You already mm. have a part of your brain that makes you want to be here and here is a very specific space it's why i'm always shocked when people will blame my borderline on my communication style i'm like do you think you communicate clearly like do you think you are the do you think everyone's understanding you sir like everyone is confusing and i wish we gave more space to just clarifying and clarifying and clarifying but in particular i do think that chud and dk ha are like i call them the tmz of youtube <laughs> I don't think they have good intentions, right? Like they're not trying to understand people. I, I wanted to ask you if you know anything about DK because when his girlfriend, she came at me so hard in a panel once and I was like, who are you? I don't even know who you are. And people were like, the Boots I girl, whatever her name is. Yes. And I didn't know who she was. And people were like, oh, she's DK's girlfriend and DK's like a cesspool. And I was like, who's DK? No. And now I'm wondering, do people hate DK because of what he did to you? Or do people hate DK for a different reason? I, I don't know. I don't know anything about DK or the law behind DK or anything like me, that. Me neither, I um, guess. I yes, yes. I was as I was as shocked to find out that Boots and him w were dating. Yeah. Uh, when that was I found out through that panel. When you were on the panel. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she just Yeah. Went at you. Wow. And I'm like, what uh, the heck? <laughs> I get it though. I get, I really do. Like a part of me has to be able to say, okay, why are they acting this way? And I'm like, even I got the nicest comment on my video the other day, which was like, Brittany, I hated you for the longest time. And I admit it was because your levels video made me mad. And then I just watched your other content and I was like, oh, and I was like, man, something about that original levels video really got under people's skin. And here's my theory. It's because everyone thought they were a one. Mm -hmm. Because we are so self-loathing as a world. We hate ourselves so much that I describe the most useless person on the planet and half of you think it's you. Rip to your self-esteem, people. Rip to your self-esteem. Like, it was my bad for thinking the internet had better self-esteem. Like, I did not think people were going to identify as a one. 
And so my theory is like people were mad at me because they thought I was talking about them when I was literally thinking of a person so rare, you're not even bound to meet them. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. it's just so funny. So that's my theory is like DK and Boots or whoever, if they have an ill opinion about you, it's because like they somehow project any negativity in your work onto themselves or they're just in it for um, like Chud, I think, is just in it for the cloud of it, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think he's he's quite sort of well adjusted. I think he sort of lives his own life off the internet mm, and everything mm-hmm. and is doing his thing. I think there's a very stark difference between whoever he is in real life and then Chud Logic. Oh, really? Like you think it's pretty? I you would... think it's like pretty like a hard character? Yeah, yeah, I definitely think so. I I think I I don't I think his community are to him. They're just what like sort of pays his rent and mm. like sort of pays the mortgage really. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't think it sort of goes beyond that. Uh, I feel that it's very much, it's very much a persona. I think it's very much based in this idea of, especially when it came to me, it was really a good example. And I saw this sort of floating around his community at the time of this being a hashtag me too moment for men. Mm. and that I was being used as sort of an example of that because these were sort of the things that DK was saying especially on his Twitter about like sort of this being you know women sexually harassing men and not being able to take no and breaching boundaries and you know time to get angry guys and that's basically I feel just the essence of that whole era for them. Okay, two things, kids. Sorry, your video did that thing again. Can you click it off and on for me again? Okay. I'm so sorry. Yes. Okay, yes, you're back. Okay, I want to say that this is where I'm confused, though, because with the receipts you showed and with my understanding of the timeline, and look, I'm all about flirty jokes. Sometimes I send super chats doing that to Kyla, and she's married, and, like, I'm married, and, like, we still do it, and, like, I, I'm i okay flirting with everybody. It's, you know what it is, girl? I think the space is too straight. <laughs> I just think it's very hetero and they don't understand like you can flirt platonically and none of them get it because they're all coomers and like I don't understand what's going on. But I feel oh, yeah, like, like destiny with you. Literally. And, uh, just, you in Seattle saying, you know, you cuddle with your friends. You have a good time with your friends. Like, no. <laughs> it's so fun. And like, I get it. It sounds, but you know, I always expect people online somehow to be more open-minded and they're really not any more open-minded than anyone else. Because in my head, I'm like, yeah, did you just change culture and all of a sudden different rules? You just change Mm. culture, different rules. And so this idea that they're limiting themselves to thinking like, I can never have that. I will never have that. I'm like, you, but all of us could have it. But they project it. They go, this isn't real. Don't listen to Britney. She's making this up. And I'm like, I'm not, it's not a lie. I just talked to my homies today, the ones I used to cuddle with all the time. And I'm like, how's everyone doing? How's life? And I'm just thinking about it. They're all at like Ren Fair cuddling. And I'm like, like, (laughs) You know what I'm like? Oh, my gosh. Like, you know what I mean? You think people again, it is what it is. So um, I think there's like a issue with this space where one, they don't understand like you can platonic flirt. So they're just not ready for it. And two, I think a part of them is just so male focused. It is a male space. You know, like I think Kyla was saying 50 percent of her audience is women. Like I have 60 percent women. So Mm. my audience and then the rest of them are very cool men or very queer people. And so Mm. and the non-binary people are in there, too. So I'm dealing with like such a different audience. And we're in the mental health focus space and philosophy, as you Mm. know. And but in the debate space and the drama space and the space that you and I have found ourselves. I'm sitting here and constantly thinking, like, are you all just like dysfunctional? You're negative or is there like a saving grace here? Where is the saving grace in this space? And I don't know where it is. And that's my concern in terms of like, how do you function in this space? Mm. And especially you've been gone. And I assume it's because there's something about coming back to this space that feels a way. Yes. That's sort of, I'm sort of quite frightened. I feel Mm. like sort of a porcupine, I think with like all like my like, nettles or like needles just like yeah. poking out and I'm just it just it, it kind of scares me I think because uh, you sort of really have to I think the whole situation with Merck that mm. you recently have really been covering and it's been really really interesting so thank you for that yeah but I think it's really sort of brought home to me sort of the importance of I guess 
everything that goes into branding and into having a strategy for yeah. what you're doing and knowing what you're doing and sort of ultimately sort of being part of a game really and sort of knowing what role you play and how you're going to advance to the end yeah and I don't naturally I'm not naturally inclined to having that sort of mindset about things but then I also suffer the consequences of refusing to have that mindset in terms of my growth and revenue in terms of sort of my channel and monetization and all of that and then I feel like I'm not going anywhere or that nothing is really going in the direction that I sort of foresee for my channel um, yeah. and what I want to accomplish so there's sort of decisions and choices that I need to make and that I see people constantly making in terms of streaming and content creation that um, I guess is something I'm very scared of doing and having to do. And so yeah. I have instead taken the easy way out, which is not to stream, um, which is not practical in terms of what I do. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, um, <laughs> the last few months, while well, I just, I settled into immigration. I'm now a temporary resident here in Croatia, as I'm mm. sure you know. And so I'm really excited about all of that. But during that whole mm. process, as we were waiting, because like, gosh knows if I had been sent back to the US girl, like it just would have made everything a lot harder. But okay, so I'm sitting here. I'm in this like apartment. I'm moving in. It's my partner's former, like his one bedroom bachelor pad that he even, he had before he met me type thing. And I'm sitting there in this apartment and I'm like, what am I doing with my career? Like, what am I doing with my stream? Because the month I took off to move here, um, you know how it is with streaming in life. You take a day off and boom. So everything mm. kind of crashed a little bit, which, you know, is predictable and normal. And now we're coming back up. But I made the decision. Once I made the decision of what to do, everything worked again. But when you're in that lull stage of like, what am I doing? Every day at 3 a.m., I swear to God, I would wake up. I'd be like, <gasps> and he'd look at me he'd be like, what? And I'm like, what am I doing on YouTube? And he'd be like, what? And I'm like, listen, I could do this or I could do this. I could do this. I could, I could be so good at all of these things, but I can't do all of them. I have to pick one. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, so do I make content that I've edited? Do I make streams? Do I make this? My podcast stays. That's always going to be here. But what do I do is the like the big thing. And it's so hard to know when you're like, I could be anything because – once you pick something, the, what you're doing is you're reassuring your audience, you have a brand and a focus, and they can have a thing to expect. Mm. I have to reassure the audience that I'm going to come to work. Mm -hmm. And I want to do that. As a gift to them for being here, I want to give them a reassurance I will be here. So it's almost like this symbiotic relationship. But man, picking which one to do is one mm. of the hardest things, like it was so stressful picking and I didn't think it was going to be streaming girl. I told myself, no, no, no. I don't like myself when I stream. I think I get too mean. Like this isn't the best version of me. And then here I am. <laughs> I yeah. just, I needed the real life act like interaction with the audience. I, I mm. couldn't do it. I was like, if I don't have the real life interaction with my audience, I'm going to mm. get bored of posting videos. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I chose the right answer. I, according to the analytics, I chose the right answer and yeah, the audience yes. seems pretty happy. Yeah, I, I feel pretty good about it. But man, I really had to ask myself, like, how am I not going to hate coming to work every day? And this was the best thing I could come up with, streaming full time and a podcast and facil like facilitating conversation. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, it was a very stressful few months, like renegotiating my my brand with myself. I have tons of notebooks of notes of like everything I was going to do. It is incredibly exhausting just figuring it out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. honestly, like you're going through something that is so a part of this space. Now, I'll tell you this. You'll hear from certain streamers, and I think they're in a different class than me and maybe you. I don't know. Where like they'll go like, I never burn out. And I'm like, cool, not me. Couldn't be me. Like, I'm going to burn out. That's why I give myself two days off streaming, right? Is I told myself, okay, let's plan for a burnout. Because what we're really saying is let's plan for days I don't feel 100%. Mm -hmm. I don't feel up to par. I don't feel up to standard. Like, let's, you know what I mean? Let's pick, let's yeah. pick a schedule that works for when things go bad. Because I know myself. I know I'm going to get tired. So it's one mm -hmm. of those things where if you know yourself, you can plan. Mm -hmm. So I get where you're at, I think, with this process. Correct me if I'm wrong. But now that you're coming out of your shell and you're like hopefully streaming again and this is going to be the beginning start of it, have you 
sort of solidified that conversation with yourself about what you want to do, it sounds like you want to stream. Yes, you know, I, I really enjoyed or before my last stream, I really enjoyed streaming. I did, yeah. um, you know, I'd sort of like go in there. I didn't necessarily know what I was doing, but it was enjoyable. And it was also, I sort of proved to myself every time that I could actually do something that mm. was completely out of my comfort zone. Um, that I just, I would panic for the whole day before I streamed yeah. and then I'd stream and I'd be fine. And after yes. I'd stream, I'd feel on top of the world. Yes. So, <laughs> It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So literally, was, I'm sorry, but literally an hour before every stream, I'm like, <sighs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I know, I know. And then there are these people, like, I assume Destiny yeah. and XQC. And they just, just like, uh, hey, chat. <laughs> and they're like, how? What are you doing? What are you on? What drug are we on? I want to be on it. Exactly, exactly. It's it's like, you know, that's why I'm always late to my streams. Yeah. It's not because I'm oh. sort of just like stumbling in and like, hi, it's because I'm like, you know, sort of bracing myself and like about to press, oh, no, you know, it's, it's sort Literally. of this whole shtick. Um, but yes, I think right now, I think I'm sort of, I'm in a bit of a bind because ironically, since I've stopped streaming, the problem with, with, when I streamed, basically, is that after I streamed, even though I'd be, you know, high, I'd feel great. I'd look at my analytics and mm. every time I'd lose at least 100 subscribers. Like really? every single time. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. It was, really, it was a time. Um, I don't know if this was just like the algorithm and YouTube just clearing off people, but mm. it was something that just was happening. And I was losing subscribers like after every single stream for quite a few months um it wasn't like sort of a thing that just happened like once it like was like four months after i streamed and i mean i think relative to now when i've stopped streaming i've actually been growing like mm. pretty fast like i've grown from like 150 subscribers to like now i gained like 10,000 more nice. since i've stopped streaming and my mm. revenue has also, ironically, even though I'm not streaming and I'm not as active on my channel, I sort of put out a video essay once every like 12 days or so, my revenue's up as well. And in terms of so, sort of all the real life implications, it's not so much just like, oh, you know, money. Um, it's more so just, you know, I can go to bed knowing that I'll be able to pay for my rent, basically. Yeah. And having that and being able to, you know, be like okay i can actually you know go out go grocery shopping and not like sort of like think about every single penny mm -hmm. when i'm doing this yeah. and it's sort of i have felt that i've been reaping sort of like those benefits like mentally definitely in my own like sort of life um relative to how i was before when i was just stressing about money every mm -hmm. single second of every single day and it's odd because, you know, I'm putting out less content on my channel uh, in theory, but YouTube or the algorithm seems to like that. Yeah. So I'm a bit, I think in terms of that, I sort of think to myself, like, okay, if I stream or if I start streaming, like what if this whole cycle happens again? Like everything that happened before this of just degrowth sort of happens. And um, because of that, I sort of, I think that's also at the back of my mind when I'm yeah. thinking about streaming. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wonder, and this is this is such a YouTube talk, but there is something about your audience having an expectation, and I wonder if the people on whole who watch you for your video essays wouldn't want you as a streamer because I know you don't. Oh, you know Sifisis, don't you? Like you've talked to him before. I think that's how you yeah. say his name. I watch his stuff and I always wondered if he, when he shows his face, if people like it or not, because they're so used to his art, right? His mm -hmm. like aesthetic. And I always wonder like, oh, that's like kind of brave of him to change brand because people have an expectation of you. And so I mm -hmm. wonder if almost like streaming on a second channel would be better. So people who are here for video essays, because look, I'll tell you this. I looked at my analytics. People love it when I talk to ABBA. They love him. When I talk mm. to somebody else, they hate my analytics. Voomp, and it's insane. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, it's so funny because I'm like, 
oh my God. Like, because everyone has this like idea, right? That like mm-hmm. certain people will help boost you no matter what. Nope. Not when you have a girl audience, not when you have a queer audience, not when you have a mentally health aware audience. They don't want to listen to someone who brings in a negative audience. They want ABBA who brings in really positivity and like great mm. vibes. And he's so open and curious and just he's just so fu- safe. Like he feels so safe. Mm. And so my audience loves it when he's on. The analytics show him as the top, top like collaborator. People love him. And then it's funny to see who's at the bottom because you're like, no way. No way. There's no way. Like they have a big audience and you're like oh my God, shut up. And you realize like, wait, because again, in this space, you always think like, oh, if they have big numbers, that's all you need. You need the right energy. So I wonder if you're Mm. also going to run into the issue. Like if you talk to, hold on, what's his name? President Sunday and all those Mm. people, like there is a negative energy around certain people in this sphere. (laughs) And I know you guys, I think you guys are okay maybe, but like, I don't know. Oh, like, Sunday. Yeah. Are you good with him or no? Oh, yes. Sunday. I, I have a very soft spot for Sunday. I think we've had a private conversation and he's, I, I, I you know, he, he does his thing online. That's, that's his thing. Yeah. But in terms of him as a person, I, I, I hold him in quite high regard. So, yeah, I, I, I consider him a personal chum. Oh, uh, good. Yes. Okay, it's, great. It's fine. Go off okay, about great. his audience no, 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 no. and everything. I know. That's great. If you guys have managed to make the peace, that's all I want in this space. But I wouldn't be surprised if certain energies aren't going to be as appealing to the people who watch your video essays, maybe. Mm-hmm. Because you're mm-hmm. such a calming energy. You're so lovely. It's like, it's so nice that in contrast, some of the drama spaces or even like Mr. Girl energy, like it's all very different energy. You know, you're asking a different audience to be there. And then on top of that, like I love that my chat is so nice. But when I talk to certain people the chat becomes like a cesspool all over again and then I have to come to work in this space so it's so many things go into it but I'm not surprised Mm. that YouTube has like rewarded you for doing essays because those do very well on YouTube you know Mm. what I mean like some of the best top people in the space who do video essays like they're they're doing great stuff with that so I'm not I always predicted that you would just rise in rank in terms of that because your video essays are so good that there wouldn't be a doubt about it but it is one of those things where do you want to cut yourself off from streaming or do you want to stream on a different channel or that's a hard brand decision to make is what I'm trying to say. Mm. Yes, yes, that is definitely. I think that is that is probably the direction that I'm leaning into. Um, but in terms of juggling two channels, because oh. I've always said to myself, I'm never having more than one channel. I'm just having one channel and I'm just going to do everything on that one channel. And because then I know that I'm going to put 100% into it. Yeah. Um, oh, kid, I'm so sorry. It the video did a thing. Can you click, yeah. click? Got sorry. It. No worries. It looks like your whole screen melts. <laughs> okay, oh, back. gosh. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I don't it's know okay. what's going on. It's probably Discord. Let's blame Discord. Okay. Okay, keep okay. going. Uh, yes, yes. So I just always have wanted just one channel to just put 100% yeah. into because I know what will happen. I know what I do. I sort of... I can only focus on one thing at a time. Sort of focusing on two things at a time is just not not something I ever do uh, in yeah. life. Uh, and so I know what will sort of, I know the trend, I know myself, uh, and, I, and I do worry that I will just focus 100% on one at one point and then just leave that and then go and do 100% on the other one. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure how well that will work in terms of the algorithm and all of that stuff but that is definitely something that I need to work on and negotiate with myself and just do Uh, I think I think it's uh, sort of yeah 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 and then have you worked on multiple streams of income yet um well I, I got a manager oh okay so that's helping in terms of like sponsorships great that sort of thing great uh so yes yeah so i i, I am trying i'm trying to yeah. be a bit more business savvy yeah um it's annoying i'm not very good at it no it's annoying i'm so bad at it i'm just like okay mm. i'm trying to get merch i've been trying to get merch out for like six months <laughs> Oh, yes. it's coming it's coming i promise i just like i'm just it takes me a lot of spoons to respond to emails and i'm like mm. i got this Brittany. Nope. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll get it. It's almost there. It's very close. 
Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, me too. I've designed all my merch. I have Amazing. the whole store. I just have to press go live. <laughs> but it's just that, that I'm like, people are going to hate this. They're going to think it's ugly. They're not going to like this. Nobody's going to buy this. Yeah. Like, please, girl, like, humble yourself. Yeah. And so then I'm like, I'll press it at, like, I don't know, the end of the month, you know, when, like, people get paid. End of the month passes. Hasn't been pressed yet. <laughs> so girl. <laughs> Girl. I think, uh, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. That part of our brains, I'm like, that's the weird, that's the part that goes, why are we here in this space when it, it, and it's like, are we here for the art of it? Are we here for the community? So we, let's say it was, because this obviously isn't, in, or wasn't your primary job most of your life, right? Like, why, mm -hmm. why are you here right now in this space? Like, why do you keep making content? I love what it sort of, I guess, in a way sort of pushes me to do. Like it really, I find that whenever I edit, I'm always learning something new about how to like add this effect or do this or mm -hmm. to like highlight that or to make this look a certain way and being able to create something and to put it out there and to have people see it, acknowledge it, appreciate it, criticize it, what have you. It's just it's such an incredible thing. It's like just yeah. making something that nobody can sort of take away from you. That's sort of always going to be there. It's sort of like a part of you that you put into something. And I think in this day and age, sort of the, I guess the art of creating is so, I feel that it's, it's sort of, even with YouTube, it's like sort of very much like a, on the production line of things. You're sort of making a commodity or whatever. Yeah. But I still feel that there's this some um, this like sacred little thing in creating and the process of like making a video with my thoughts and my feelings, my face, my aesthetic and what I want it to look like. That's really personal to me. That's mm -hmm. really quite sacred. Um and so I definitely, I think that is a, a big part of it, most definitely. I think also finding other people out there who I know I'll never meet in my life, but who resonate with something that I've said yeah. and who will sort of communicate with me in the comments that their story or how they feel. And that's just incredible to me. It sort of just blows my mind that sort of in this world, there's somebody like sitting in, I don't know, Azerbaijan who's thinking yeah. wow you know this video by this little African girl yeah. like spoke to me about like hair and so it's just it's incredible and it just blows my mind every single time I read my comments like I just read all my comments like sort of oh, yeah, totally. every day like all the time but it's just yeah I think it's sort of how surreal it is it's like like you said sort of like what am I doing here but it's also Although it's daunting a lot of the time, it's also like, what am I doing here? Like, this is fucking fantastic. This yeah. is incredible. Like, how yeah. is this happening? How are all these people coming here to the space, to me, and just doing this? It's incredible. So, yeah, I'd say those are the two, like, main reasons why I do this and keep doing this and want to keep doing this. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, that's well. Uh, that's why I got really serious about uh, money, like the making it a career, because I was like, wait a second. Mm. My whole life, I had this. I know you say you've been watching the streams, but like, I don't know if you heard this story, but when I was in crisis over the last few months of like, I was so exhausted. I was we we're doing paperwork and waking up and going to appointments like every day. And I was trying to work and I was so tired. And then one day I thought to myself, man, if I could just work YouTube full time, like and have no other distractions, that'd be great. And then I was like, you do work full-time YouTube. You have no other job. What are you talking about? And I had this like intrusive thought of like, why am I so exhausted that I think I don't have all day to do YouTube? Because like, that was the dream. I've always worked two to three jobs just to support my YouTube career. Like I've mm. always worked so I could do YouTube, right? And even though I've always made money from YouTube, it's never been enough to live off of until recently. And um, in a way that made me feel it's, like secure about it. And so I'm sitting here and I'm telling myself like the universe literally made it. I mean, you did the work, but the universe literally made it so you can do this mm. and you are about to throw it away because you're getting into your head or your tiredness or your intrusive thoughts about what, like, what are you, what do you, and I'm like, I think I'm exhausted trying to be something I'm not. 
but what's the thing that I'm trying to be that is me? And it's hard to be motivated by money. Because like once you have your basics covered, it's like, okay, I don't need a Bugatti. Like, so as long as my basics are covered. But you know, on YouTube, though you can live off the basics, the problem is, is if you don't boost your your place on the, the platform, you might not be able to actually sustain it. So it's yeah. not it's not like a normal job where I can be a teacher making 30K a year, but I'm building up a resume with a school district. Like YouTube doesn't care if you make 30K a year. Like it's not enough to sustain yourself because it's more of a – like I think of it as a gig job. And I'm like, okay, well, how do you sustain gig work? And so I had to be very serious about this really amazing opportunity to have the job I've always wanted to have, which was to share my ideas and have people respond. That's all I ever wanted out of life. And now I have it. And so I kind of owe it to myself, the self that had been working all these years, to like be very serious about this thing. So it's not that you're serious about the money, but though the money follows, you're serious about offering a product to an audience that deserves a product that's worth paying attention to. Mm. And you are weirdly that product. But more than that, I think my ideas are the product. I'm trying to sell my ideas. And I'm trying to mm. say, hey, I think I have something here for some people. Mm. And I think that that's the pressure I put on myself is to say, like, be thoughtful about your ideas. Even if you're going to be human, sometimes like use your feelings in a sentence. But I want to give them something because I, I cannot imagine not being so grateful that this is my life. Mm. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to ever come across like I'm not grateful that this is my life. Yes. Yeah, definitely. No, definitely. Like what you said there, a hundred percent. Like this is incredible. Like it's amazing. Like I had a friend contact me and just say to me like, you know, I'd love to see you this weekend. Like, can you like travel to come and see me like across the country? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I thought to myself, if I had any other job, I would never be able to go and see this friend. Mm. Like it just, it just would not make any sense. Exactly. And it's like, you know, these like sort of little things that I take for granted now. Like, you know, if I want to go to the gym at like nine in the morning, I can go to the gym at nine in the morning and let out the steam and, you know, all these things that I think that just really, it's just incredible sort of the yeah. life. I can sort of do work when I'm just traveling. I can do work while I'm just going for a walk, just thinking about ideas and how I'm going to make a certain video or whatever. Like, it's absolutely incredible. I feel like sort of, I guess one of those like sort of patron of the arts, like Mozart who like sort of gets paid by somebody to just be yeah. a creative. And it's like, yeah. what on earth is this life? It's incredible. It's absolutely amazing. And so, yes, yeah, I think it's it's so important to be so grateful and so aware of that and like you said to like really take advantage of this opportunity when you yeah. get to that point where you are a full-time youtuber and to be able to actually really do everything yeah um and yeah i think that is something that i've personally been struggling with a lot to sort of come to terms with and get and to push myself toward mm, mm. but yes i think it is it is coming. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. My, I can hear like comments in my head already that I get sometimes where it's like, well, it's easy to say that, you know, you're, you're doing it now, but the rest of us don't get to live like that girl. Like I said, I worked two to three jobs just to maintain this job until it did become a job. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I called it a job, even though it wasn't always paying the bills. And so the problem is like, I think anyone could be a YouTuber who wanted to be, I think anyone can be a content creator, right? But doing it is going to take a consistency that is incredibly draining on your spoons. It is exhausting. Mm. For some people, like my brother, he had an epiphany over COVID where he realized, oh, like working for myself is hard. I was like, yeah. And he go, even though he was making kind of good money, it's a lot of discipline to get yourself up and go to work when you're your boss. Mm. And so he was like, I'm going to work at a company. And now he's working and thriving and making more money. And he's like, oh, my gosh, it is so much easier having someone to come like to tell me to come to work. And I think that's what people forget is like this job is hard to get to a success position. But once you do, it is like a reflection of your hard work, but also it is like a gift at the same time. It's weird. It's like a gift you give yourself. Yes. Yeah, that's a good way. Good way of putting it. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So to clarify, I want to make sure I didn't mishear you. When you say like you think it's coming or you're almost there. Are you saying like the consistency of it? Like, do you, do you not feel, do you feel secure in your YouTube job? I wouldn't say at this point, I think I've had a very hard time at seeing this as a job, like mm. as an actual job. Uh, I think it's, 
primarily primarily to do with my context in the UK YouTube is not taken like seriously as a job sure. like if you want to like rent anywhere if you say that you're a YouTuber it's like what on earth um and people don't see it as a job at all just socially even my friends just think you know so when are you going to get a real job uh so it's sort of for me and in my context of sort of being like the one and only who does something like this uh it does it doesn't feel like a job um it doesn't feel like a real job like sort of that mm. real people do and so i have found it very difficult to actually think of it in that way mm -hmm. um I think I'm going through a sort of process of trying to not care so much what other people think, yeah. uh, which is difficult because that is my entire sort of life is, is like just caring about what other people think about me and what I do and who I am. And I think this has something to do with just like real life and also online, like sort of people having complete misconceptions about who I am and it just there's sort of no point in trying to correct things correct what they're thinking yeah and so i just think to myself you know what's the point in putting so much energy so many spoons into caring about what other people think just do what you can do do what you want to do and it'll figure itself out um so yes i think i am starting gradually to see youtube as an actual job and yeah. as a job that i actually can say i'm proud to do this i'm happy to do this this is what i do this is what i want to do for the long term and that is okay um this isn't sort of just like my hobby that i'm doing until i get onto a phd program you yeah. know so yes i think i'm coming to that point of self-confidence uh, in myself and that this aspect of my identity yeah i'm a bit shook at the idea that you like your friends don't consider it a real job i'm so from california like youtubing is like i'm so like I'm my friends are all baby boomers and uh, like baby boomer woman they don't get the internet beyond okay. facebook uh, okay <laughs> okay that's so interesting like um do they like I always compare you know what I even like well to be fair I don't tell people I'm a YouTuber to be fair when I usually tell people because I don't want them to like be weird about it but I'm used to the opposite reaction where they're like oh my god what is your channel can I see it I'm like no <laughs> I don't want you to see it so like even here when we got this apartment um you know I tell everyone the same thing I tell everyone like oh I make um like I review philosophy and pop culture and that's usually what I tell people mm -hmm. and they always think oh newspaper or blog I'm like sure like, I just don't correct people, like, with their assumptions, because I'm like, sure. Or we'll say, oh, it's on the internet, but, like, boomers, mm. you're right, don't know what that means. Or people don't, you know, I just, I want, um, I consider it very much a job to myself, but I will say that I struggle, I struggled the last three years not to feel like I was just having so much fun with it. Mm. And now I'm like, okay, Brittany, like, it is fun, but now we also have to, like, be consistent. Versus before, I would just take off work. I wouldn't show up. I would, like, go hang out with my brothers. I can't believe how many streams in the last three years that I've been like, eh, I'm going to go watch anime. And I've just left. And now I'm sitting here like, okay, Brittany, we're at work. You can't just go watch anime. And it's been it's been really nice to change it up, you know, in some ways. I mean, obviously, it shows in the analytics, and I appreciate that. AdSense finally is liking me better. It took me so long to get AdSense not to hate me. And other YouTubers, thank you. Other YouTubers have been helping me, to be fair. Like, they, I've reached out to them. I was like, hey, bro, your AdSense is, like, awesome. Can you please help me? And they're like, yes. And so people in this community can be really good. Actually, wait, I want to talk to you about this. Because people in this community, there are some people, I want to say for all the shit we talk about, like, people not being the greatest, I want to say that there are some really amazing people in this space. Mm. Okay? And I, yourself included. But I have had really great conversations just behind the scenes with like Papa Gut or Kyla or just people in my sphere that are like willing to hear me out or talk to me about things. And I can't tell you how wonderful it feels just to have good people in your corner because the bad mm. ones, they're so frustrating and they are the loudest, but they do not make up at least a majority of the experiences that I'm having. And I hope that they mm. don't eventually, if they are now making up the majority of what you're experiencing, mm. you know, I don't No, they're not. 
No, Good. no, 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 definitely not. I'm just, I'm very, I'm terrible at communicating because I don't want to be a burden to anybody. And so reaching out to you was like, I had to just do it in the frenzy because I knew otherwise I wouldn't do it. And I so appreciate I like, okay, it. I just, I just have to do this. I've been waiting. I just... <laughs> Z, I have been waiting. I joke all the time with my partner. I was like, you know, one day she'll email me back. One day I'll get an email. <laughs> It was yeah, so I, lovely seeing it in my inbox. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yes. Um, for everybody, especially Kyra, not so erudite. Like I I know. I just I'm I'm so afraid because I hold her in such like I hold like her and you and sort of everybody like sort of in this sphere and such like high esteem. I feel like I'm going to say something and that is just going to like ruin everything. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, if I don't say anything, then there's no chance of ruining everything. Then yeah. we just stay stuck in time, like from our last conversation and everything's good and bliss. And I don't potentially ruin anything. Yeah. And, uh, cause that's sort of like my biggest fear of like ruining something and rejection. That's sort of like the essence of like sort of my core being. Yeah. Um, and so it's the chicken's way out and the easier way out for me that I always resort to, which is don't communicate because then you can't destroy anything. You can't break anything. You can't topple down the Jenga tower if you don't even approach it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's best not to. And yeah, that's just something that I just always fall back into. Uh, it is something that I need to work on and figure out. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done a lot better in my real life and real life friendships and Good. interactions than online. But this is the next step, definitely you online. Know, there's so, something about yeah. that, though, that's kind of honest and true that it's true if you don't rock the boat, you'll always like be chilling. But there comes mm. a point where you like it's it's like I'd rather rock the boat and have people leave the sphere than stay in it like it's kind of better to know like do you feel in any way kind of like you lost something with like the falling out with chud like do you feel like in a way you thought you had something you didn't have and that was the most disappointing part of it because i know you guys weren't As in generally in the space like yeah just to have a with... contact like just to have somebody to tweet at like just to have it's like you guys weren't yeah. even friends but to like you weren't even friends. So like, why are you blowing, why are you like and burning a bridge that doesn't even exist? Like, why are you even being mean? Yeah. We hadn't even spoken directly to each other like ever. Yeah. So it was, it was sort of like something that didn't even happen had been like destroyed in right. a way, I guess. So weird. And so that for me was like, well, if that's going to happen with something that didn't even exist, like what could happen to something that actually does exist? Like sure. real sort of connections or uh you know acquaintances online like what could really happen yeah um and so yes this is just this is how i respond just systematically to so many things i mean my friend even jokes and said you know if i were to get married i wouldn't even turn up to my wedding because i'd be too afraid of getting married Girl. and then ruining everything so it's best yeah. to just not turn up and just yeah you know <laughs> So, yeah. And I think you said yeah. abandonment issues earlier. Is that like your adoption stuff, if you don't mind me prying? Or is that something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you think so? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All of that. Uh, I mean, that's fair. Being fostered, everything. The reason yeah. I ended up in the UK was because my previous foster parent was like, bye. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Girl, I was that the it, guy? It's... No, no. The guy was who I came to live with in the UK. Okay. Okay. Um, Yes, he also recently passed away. So that was also a bit right. of a like, weird thing. But uh, right. yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But yes, uh, I think that definitely sort of encompasses the entirety of my thinking. It's sort of rejection, abandonment, and fear is yeah. what sort of really directs all of my decisions in life. Um, which, yeah, I mean, it doesn't sound as sort of like bad as it seems because I, I don't really have a very exciting life, which I'm fine with. So it doesn't really feature too much. But in sort of like, I think things that are important, like friendships, staying in contact in constant communication, things like that, it definitely does pop up. And I'm definitely would consider myself not to be a good friend, but to fortunately have friends 
who are very understanding and accommodating of yeah. how bad a friend I am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually think, okay, so that's a part of this sphere that I think would uh, add some like I guess it would benefit from is just being like aware that it's not personal. Cause like I always joke with my audience. It's like one day Z will message me back. Like I always joke, like, there's a joke with it, but there's obviously like a, an understanding. I think Kyla said it to you too. Like she doesn't take it personal, right? Because people mm. are on their own journey and they're doing their own thing and they communicate. Even me, I always warn people when I get new YouTube friends, I'm like, Hey, just FYI, if I don't message you in like five, six, seven, eight, nine days, just like ping me again, because what I'll do is I'll read it and I'll be like, Oh, I should respond to that. And then, <laughs> and then I don't and then it's not personal it's swear to god it is like I'm not even thinking about it. my brain just disappears right mm. you know whatever that neurodivergence part of my brain is or maybe it's just too busy thinking about other things I mean it just it is what it is but it's not personal and so I never saw it as something personal from you which I think helps me with my abandonment issues not think like oh my god like she said she liked me and now we're not talking and I don't know what's going on because in the past I think that is what I did I like ruminated and I was like why I don't get it they're saying they like me and they want to be my friend but then I never hear from them and I'm just not sure what to do with that and then I learned after therapy that like you know sometimes it's just not about you and I was like damn it really feels like it's about me though mm. but it's really mm -hmm. not a lot of the time and so even you know you coming into this space and doing like contact the way you do or being it like everyone likes you Every time you make contact, every time I say I'm going to talk to kid, like I even announced it to the Discord and they're like, oh my gosh, fun. I was like, yeah, like it's always positive feelings, but it must be hard to believe it when, you know, you're not exactly seeing those messages, but I, like I know how much my audience wants to see you, but it's not like you're seeing those messages, right? So I don't even know if, how, I don't know how much you know that not only YouTubers love to see you, but like the audience loves to see you. Oh, that's very nice. Um, yeah, it's not something that's evident to me, I think, because inevitably just in my mind and sort of the things that I see are mainly sort of the, I guess, the negative comments or the quote unquote yeah. hate comments and sort of I see those things sort of prominently. And also because I very much separate sort of my personal life from my online life. Right. I sort of, um, I, I don't sort of see it as readily because I sort of really see all the positive things as being sort of in my real life and then mm. sort of online it's sort of like I jump into like this world where everybody's angry there's like a culture war and a gender war and so you know it's not going to be a nice place exactly yeah so it's I think because of also the things I cover it tends to be sort of a bit heavier stuff or not so positive stuff I guess all the time so I don't necessarily readily expect that. Um, and so I think I'm also not the kind of person who seeks out sort of the, the good things or seeks out anything really. Yeah. Uh, I sort of wait very submissively for people to reach out to me or for, you know, things to happen. Yeah. And I don't really make things happen on my own. Um, again, trying to change that. Um, but yes. I think it it does it isn't something that I see and I think it is just a thing that I block out in and of myself. I just always see the very negative things about myself, about my situation, um sort of very I'm very sort of steeped in a lot of self-hatred mm. and self-loathing, very negative self-image and I think that definitely means that I sort of see things that just fulfill that prophecy that I yeah. really regurgitate to myself. Yeah. I wonder if you and Kyla like, can bond on that a little bit because I know she's always talking about that very openly, like her self-loathing loops are pretty intense and so she needs to take time off. And I know mm. we all are on our own journey in terms of mental health. And it's so funny from the outside to see it because of course you're like, what are you talking about? Like how, wh how, why? But then that's not, that's the hardest part, right? It's like, it's not about what's happening on the outside. It's about what's happening in here. And it's mm -hmm. about what that, you know, all the feelings you're feeling in your body. And so it is not surprising that this is coming up more now, I guess, because as your career does get better or takes off, there will be more, I assume, more thoughts of self-loathing, right? Like, do I even deserve this? Do I deserve this success? Do I deserve to be here? I assume. Am I projecting a little bit there or does that? No, just... no. True. Very true. Yeah. Yes. Definitely sort of feeling uh, 
I'm not sure what the phase is, sort of, is it imposter yeah, maybe. syndrome that people maybe. talk about? Yes, yeah, sort of, yeah, yeah, am I, am I really here or am I good enough to be here? Yeah. Should I be here? Um, yeah, yeah, so. Wait, 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 and I found my ear. Okay, wait, so that again? I'm sorry. Did you say something? I'm sorry, I said, I just said, I just said, like, should yeah. I be here? Yes. Am I rightfully here? Yeah. I something that I'm always now especially thinking a lot about yeah um not knowing i think it's sort of also because i'm i'm a brand as well mm. i sort of feel like this is me but this also isn't me mm -hmm. and so will somebody figure this out that like i'm just a brand but then my brand is sort of who i am but then it isn't and i i sort of think oh my gosh who am i yeah uh, you know the, you know, and then um, it's sort of, I think like now, for instance, I guess people always just call me like the incel girl or like, like the femme cell or something oh like that. Oh my God, like bro. <laughs> all I am. That, that's it. Uh, you know, yeah. in people's mind, just because like I've said, like, oh. I haven't had sex for years and, you know, I can relate to like what people are feeling, mm -hmm. but like now that's all people see and they're like, no. Uh, yeah. So it's like, yeah. You know. Okay. Well, I want to get into that with you, but your camera did the thing again. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. This is so funny. You said, okay, wait, well, hold on. You said two things that were really good. Oh, shoot. What was the first one? Now I'm thinking about the insult thing. What was the first one? Branding that I am me, but I'm, I'm not me. It was when I knocked my ear out. What it was the thing you had just said? <laughs> it was so good. Okay. It doesn't matter. The point is, is okay. The insult thing is so interesting to me. Because I, it was from a stream you did, right? I'm not sure. I've made quite a few videos on like incels and also on like my own like non-sexual life. Um, insofar as trying to sort of uh, extend an olive branch, I guess, mm -hmm. which has not been received positively. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, yes, but that is that is ultimately what. If you say kidology, it's like, oh, the, the, the femme soul, the insult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Like, people have talked about it. I think, okay, this is what's interesting about the way we use words. Because even, like, your hair video, or sometimes you talk about, when you talk, sometimes I understand this is, and I hope this isn't, like, offensive or anything, but sometimes I, when I'm imagining certain bubbles listening to you, I'm imagining what bubble they think you're in. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when you talk, I can see how the boy audiences are like what do you mean she's an incel like what she isn't she's an... but they have to understand they're not even having the experience of incel that the original word meant and they're not even like paying honor to the original woman that created that word and they're not even so when i look at them i'm like you're not having the experience that like because i remember when i was like pro incel on my channel and i was like incels welcome because I learned about the origination of incel being mm. about like a queer woman's experience and being like, yeah. oh my God, amazing. And then it's been like hijacked by boys. Boys are so hijacky. They came in and hijack. And then you're having this experience with maybe this word or word adjacent. Maybe there's so many different variations of cell now. Mm. And so mm. when people see you and hear you, they do get upset that you are not having the exact same lived experience that they have in relation to this word. And so yeah. what happens is like there's just like even even the color of your skin sometimes when you talk about hair or blackness, I'm like you're not having the same lived experience as all of these other people with those things. Mm -hmm. And so they get angry at you for almost like giving your experience because it almost feels to them like you're discounting theirs. Yes, exactly. And I, I think that's Definitely. fair for them to feel that way. But man, how, it feels that way all the time to all of us when people say like, no, that's not what you're going through. That doesn't make sense because that's not how I see myself. And that, that's what I'm trying to say with like, this isn't about you. Mm. Kid is telling us about her and her experience and you're just supposed to listen and understand. But if they cannot accept your lived experience is real because it doesn't match the way that their box or bubble per, like says you fit, then it's too much. It's like an overload of information, right? Which then causes a a little like self-fulfilling prophecy of loneliness in this space. Because if I'm mm. saying something and someone goes, nope, like, no. And I'm like, what? you can't say no to my lived experience. You're like, I just did. And I'm like, huh, like, what am I supposed to do with that information? Right. And like, now you're basically saying, 
I like I don't exist like kind of and then you're like well where do I belong yeah. right and so it just it continues like this weird cycle of being in this space of when am I allowed to be myself and on top of that I'm a brand yes definitely exactly exactly you just that summation was exactly how I feel it's just sort of constantly I just sort of feel like I say something and then it's like no <laughs> we will not see you and I just, I want to be seen, but it's yeah. just no from the get go. And uh, it's incredibly, inf it, it's frustrating. And I just sort of like, don't know what to do. I sort of feel like I'm stuck in this like box and I just can't leave. I can't get out. But at the same time, I'm, I, it isn't a box that I want to be in. It isn't, it's, it's nothing. And I don't know what to do. And mm. I think that is definitely sort of a bit of a, existential dilemma uh a virtual existential dilemma that i sort of find a lot um when sort of especially like these labels are sort of i wouldn't say labels put onto me but sort of people make assumptions or inferences about those labels yeah. um which is just i think it's I don't know if I'm, I'm sure this has just been a thing on the internet all the time but i haven't been on the internet too long but it it does seem like sort of I don't know if all of a sudden it just feels like people are using like these labels more readily. Like just, you know, I'm just sort of brushed off as being, if I say something that you don't like, oh, I'm Candace Owens today, mm. uh, or, you know, I'm an Uncle Tom or a yeah. coon or whatever. And it's, it's sort of, it's, it, it's, it's so like soul crushing. <laughs> I feel like my like chest just caves in yeah. whenever I sort of like encounter that. And I think that it's sort of, it feels like it's sort of more readily acceptable to just do that now. It's just, that's what you do. It, there's, mm -hmm. there's no point in even trying to understand where somebody's coming from, to talk to them, to see them, which I think is really hard. It's just, yeah, no. Yeah. Well, so much of it, okay, so here's my theory on it in terms of like seeing people in spoons. Obviously, like I talk about bubbles all the time. But even more than that, bubble within the bubble within the bubble, like, again, like, blackness is a bubble. It's like, cool. And then inside that bubble is, like, all the different cultures and all the different ways we have a relationship with our skin and all the different ways. Like, there's no way, there's no monolith here. And so the, the dilemma is that it's kind of exhausting to actually be aware of how individual everybody is. It mm. is sort of, like, I think overstimulating in the way that, you know, when you – um, what is it called when you like uh, purchase paralyzation or whatever they call it when you see too many iPhone colors it's like you stop and you're like I'm overwhelmed I don't want to pick one now sometimes I think we are in denial of the nuance and complexity of the human experience because it's too exhausting and it is easier to generalize it is easier to say men are like this women are like this everyone is like this and I understand the shortcut because the shortcut is so reassuring but I also think I'm going to I don't want to make a prescription, but I want to sort of encourage people to challenge themselves to be a little bit more spoon drained, I guess, to just consider the individual consciousness we're talking to, like a Merc or even a Sneak or even a Destiny. Like I want people to understand this space is so contentious and people are so over the top and people, not everyone is like that, but even the people who are, they are also screaming for somebody to see them. What was Destiny's biggest complaint? That I, the way I saw him didn't match how he saw himself and he couldn't trust me anymore. How do you think everyone feels, my bro? Everyone feels like that in this space because mm -hmm. we are viewing each other in a space that is limited with limited information and we're giving our opinions on our limited information and then nobody clears it up. We just all disappear on each other. And then we wonder why the space continues to do it. It's not even anyone's fault. Like no one's literally at fault for being so human, but it is mm -hmm. the answer in my opinion. That's my theory so far. And unless we do that, I won't know if it's the answer because we haven't done that part yet where we talk it out. And we haven't done that part where we – like if Chud came on and we could talk about it, we could see like what were you doing? Like what was your thought process? But then he would have to face himself and ask himself why did he target a consciousness that had nothing but good energy towards him? And why did you decide to make Kidology your enemy for, for what? You know? And I just don't think people are ready to say out loud why they do things because they're afraid of being the bad guy as much as they play a big game about being tough and blunt about their opinions. True. That's my theory. Very true. Very, very true. Yes. I think 
being self-aware is is so difficult it's it's very very difficult mm. i think because you find out that you're not all that or that you're not as good of a person as mm. you sort of think or that you're sort of you don't fit so nicely into everything into sort of the frameworks and the labels mm -hmm. and the bubbles even mm -hmm. that you've always thought you do and that's very lonely because you realize that you are like sort of an individual and it's just you and that it, it, it's it's difficult to navigate yeah. a world where it is really just you sort of like the ultimate existential like dilemma that i think is nobody's encouraged to do it so why would you really do it um yeah. you know i think it's i think i've sort of personally been i would say even just not because i'm like self-aware or anything i'd say that i've just been like sort of coerced to do that because i haven't found community i haven't found a bubble or bubbles right, that right, right. accept me or that want me and so i have found myself always moving from bubbles or like sort of bouncing off bubbles and not really being in anywhere so it has always just been me and so because of that i have had no other alternative really it isn't yeah. that i'm sort of more self-aware or just more introspective it's just that i have to pass the time somehow because i don't have that sense of community or that sense of people or brethren that i can sort of find i guess this alternative bigger meaning about myself in if that makes sense yes it makes sense like literally tomorrow's podcast is all about this because i got a question in my chat yesterday and it's about this idea that i again i start with myself and i look to existence so everyone outside myself and i say hey like hey, can you can you share this with me can we connect in this way and sometimes it's yes and sometimes it's no and sometimes it's kind of and then i go mm -hmm. okay and then when it gets to the kind of and it gets to the no what do I do with all that space? I come back to myself. And then all you have is yourself. And so what I do is like, I always say like, make your own bubble. Like you are a perfect candidate for making your own bubble. You know, some people really vibe. My brother, my farm brother was born into the perfect bubble. He vibes. He's never had to leave it. He loves it. Like that bubble was made for him. It was so weird to be born. Like it's so weird to watch somebody be born into a perfect place for them. He even asks me, like, why can't you just be happy where you're from? And I was like, well, obviously, because I don't feel seen. Like, I don't feel understood here. And honestly, it's not a shade towards them. People will take it so personal. Like, what do you mean? Just tell me. Why can't why, like tell me how to see you? I, I shouldn't have to work this hard. And we should be grateful for what we can see in each other. I don't need to see a person wholly to, like, enjoy them. Like, the only mm. part of existence I want to deal with 24-7 is my husband and my cat. That is the only part of existence I want to see 24-7. Otherwise, like, I need my space. And again, just because I can see myself so well, I would like to spend time with somebody who can, even if it's just me. <laughs> like, even if it's just myself. But it's mm. not about rejecting other people. It's just about feeling not always in, like, that conflict of, am I being misunderstood? Should I talk differently? Maybe if I say words differently. Like, you know, there's just so much thinking. And I'm not a guy enough where I can just pretend, like, I'm always right. So you know what I mean? Like I'm not, I really see a training between men and women, generally speaking, of course, where like men just have this confidence about my brothers just have this confidence. And I'm like, you know, you're wrong. It's like, nah. And I'm sitting here like, I don't have this, whatever this is. And I see it in this space. I see it with the men in this space. They are so confident, even when they're so wrong. And I'm like, I don't think I've met any of the girls in this space who have that energy. Like they eventually like, they doubt themselves or they email me and they're like, hey, and I'm like, you're good. Like the women in this space really try to like question themselves a lot more. Guys rarely reach out to me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? In the same way. And it's anecdotal, but I see a little bit of a pattern there. And I just don't, I almost wish I could be like that, but I really can't. <laughs> I really can't be that way. Same, same. I really, I even, even beyond this space, I think like a female example of what you're saying mm. is like Candace Owens. Yeah. Like even I like watch her content and I watch her and I think, you know, you are saying the most ludicrous, stupid things, but you, you think you're right. And I am in awe of how confident you are. I wish I had that Girl. kind of confidence to just sit on my, in my little studio with the Daily Wire, just spewing complete contradictions about something. I'm saying something today that I said the opposite yesterday. And I am just the confidence. It's just, it's, 
incre- it's all inspiring. I get why people watch her. I get why they like believe her. But I just can't. <laughs> no, same. Little, that's been the struggle I've had my whole life. I feel like in these spaces where, to be fair, though, when I had my little moment in talk radio, it really was like, hey, you're just going to have to go along with your shtick. And I was like, I, like, they'll know I'm lying. And they go, what do you mean? I was like, I can't lie like that, bro. Like, I can lie for a moment at a survival, but I can't actually keep up a shtick of like, I can't keep this up. I don't know how they do it. A part of me, I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to you. Part of me is so impressed with Andrew Tate. I'm like, how did he rebrand himself so good? And how are people falling for it? He, people, even my own parents who hated Andrew Tate like a year ago, they're like, well, he, actually, you know, he was on Candace Owens and there's something about Not him. And I'm like, I, she, I've, how does she sleep at night? That's what I'm saying. I can't, I literally wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, and that's, I think, also, like, the thing that's also quite scary is that, like, I, I have to, like, see these people. Like, I have to acknowledge that, like, this is how Candace sees the world, sees herself. And I have to understand her and especially her audience mm. and why they are the way that they are yeah. and not hate them right? or hate her or see it as something personal to me. Like, when Candace Owens says, like, horrible vitriolic things about like young woman mm. i have to take a deep breath and say okay she's not actually like this isn't about you this right. isn't about you this is about her this right. is about her and how she sees the world for her and for her benefit and what she wants to do this isn't actually about you you're just like a tool in it because she doesn't actually see you so she right. doesn't care about you and i have to come to terms with that um and i think that that's just very very hard in a world where we are already, all of us, in a way, so insignificant to the greater scheme of things mm. that we have to sort of somehow try to actually appreciate that, even though in the greater scheme of things, we're not like all that. Like we are all that to ourselves yeah. and to like our loved ones and everything. And we have to figure out that dynamic and who we are, Yeah, um, which is hard. Our value in this space. That's why I always say like, look, I don't, I really don't think I don't care about legacy. I don't care if people remember me in a hundred years, but I really want to do good now here. And again, I don't want to put pressure on people because then people will go, oh, well, Brittany says we should do good. And then the Brittany's holding us to a higher standard. So we're going to hold, nobody needs to hold anybody to anything. But you yourself as a consciousness, sh- I'm surprised you don't have a desire because I would argue that most people obviously have some desire to do some sort of good, right? I feel like the world kind of functions, but then we have to deal with this part of existence that is so miscommunicating with themselves and then miscommunicating with us like my mom and dad were so well-intentioned when they like raised me to run a business but then also wanted me to be a stay-at-home mom but also wanted me to you know um like be independent but also not be independent and also and I was like "Mm, mm, do you see how like this is confusing like I always joke that like the irony with my parents is they wanted me to be so fiercely independent and we're also confused about why I'm so fiercely independent. And I was like, because that's how you mm. raised me. But they're like, yeah, but you need to be independent in our way. Be independent, but follow us in this way. And I'm like, oh, no, no, mm. no. You raised your kids to question. Like five of my, my parents' kids are atheists. And the joke is, well, you let us question. <laughs> like they let us question. They let us like go to different churches. They let us talk to secularists. They, I had liberal friends growing up. And I was like, oh. Yeah, like by they were so confident, dude. They're so confident we would leave the church, but they have to remember like we're not having the same lived experience they are. The church saved my parents, you know. So for them, mm-hmm. it's like the greatest thing ever, but it's not that way for everybody, and that's hard mm-hmm. for them to believe. And everyone feels that way. Everyone thinks it was so, it worked for me. It was so good for me. It has to be good for you. It's just not going to be that way. It can't be like. I'm sure Andrew Tate helps people and I'm sure Candace Owens helps people. But again, how are they helping you? To what extent? And then is it enough to like ignore all the bad they're doing? And that's always the question we have. That's the question I was having with my audience before you came on. We watched Leo Skeppy yesterday. I don't know if you know who that mm, is. Yeah, I was I was there. I know from You were watching? Screen, yeah. yeah, okay. I did not know that was his work. I did not know that was going to be the vibe. Maybe I'm totally wrong. I just, I wasn't prepared. And people were like, I don't get it. He's helped me. That's great. Let him help you. You don't have to meet your favorites and you don't have to think they're perfect. And then it goes for us. We are not perfect. Mm. Not your favorite YouTuber and not you yourself. So it's kind of like, it's so weird. We hold ourselves to such a weird high standard that we no one ever keeps anyways. 
and I just don't, I think that part is the part we're always going to be in conflict with, with ourselves and other people, right? Unrelenting standards. Am I, oh, that's what I was going to say earlier, girl. Sometimes I will talk mad shit on my streams and I'll forget people watch me. <laughs> I forget that I'm streaming to the world. Sometimes I think I'm just streaming to my audience in like this little bubble. And then people will see me or people will clip me and send me to YouTubers and then people will get mad at me. And I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. Wait, okay, wait. Like, <laughs> I don't mean it. <laughs> just listen. I just like to say sassy things. But listen, let's talk about it. And that's the problem. If you take me out of context or just like you splice me up, I'm kind of mean. I'm really not trying to be though. But I just, I want people to understand that even I forget mm. that people can hear me. <laughs> yes, yes. And yesterday it was like 3.5K people. Like, I don't know what that was. Stream. That was a fluke. Oh, I don't know what, word. that was freaking me out. I was having a heart attack the whole time. YouTube said the peak was like almost 5,000. And I was like, why? No, but why? Like, who did they come from? Where are they from? Like, what was, the, it freaked me out. Internally, I was screaming. I need you guys all to know. Internally, I was screaming because I was like, oh, my God, am I going to get in trouble? Is this bad? Am I going to get a lot of hate? I was waiting. I thought they were Leo fans. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to get in trouble. And then nothing happened. I know. It was so weird. It was I refreshed so weird. a few times because I was like, maybe this is something that's wrong. Right. Because nobody's like, nobody like news seems to be commenting. Right. But then I was like, no, this is actually this is actually, this it is real life. It was so weird. It was only, I only saw three new usernames I'd never seen before, but otherwise. Like tick marks. Like yeah. Tick marks. And so I thought, okay, that makes sense. Their people have come and are just like silent observers. And probably this is like way too philosophical and deep for them that they're just like, uh-uh, no. Do you think, okay, because then I had that thought. I thought, oh, what if it's a bunch of normies who came in from like a YouTube page or something and then didn't know how to respond? But wouldn't they be saying like, who is this? What is this? I don't get it. Like I heard nothing. It was so weird. Girl, it was so weird. And then I was like, you know what? Okay, you want to hear my conspiracy brain though? Mm -hmm. I was like, what if a hater hates me and botted my channel and then tried to get me kicked off YouTube through botting my channel with fake bots? And then I was like, can they do that? And I was like, I'm such a boomer. I don't even know if you can do that. <laughs> I, I don't know if you can do that. I hope it's not. Amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, Weird, the movement is spreading. Like, Weird. This is officially a cult. You Let's know? go. Yes. Max mm -hmm. was right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Membership's $100 a month, people. Let's go. No, literally. I just, I was shook. I was, I had no idea what that was. But honestly, you know, one day if that happens, like what a blessing, right? Could you imagine if I was actually a streamer who had that many people watching me? Like, I got, I just got so sweaty thinking about it. <laughs> you know, I do, I wasn't, like, I, I would not be surprised if that ever happened. Because, like, I, I have said, like, you were saying, like, you're not, you're not, like, sort of concerned with leaving a legacy. I'm like, in a hundred years time, I can see, like, your streams and, like, the levels and when it's, like, in, like, a book form. But it's going to be, like, because it's an actual philosophy that actual people from any walk of life can actually sit down and get something for so sure. valuable from. Yeah. And so that for me is like just a legacy in itself, just that entire like formula formulation, like the levels for me, like it's like, that is how I, I get people. That is how I can understand That's people awesome. and not awesome. freak out that people don't see the world the way that I see the world and That's be okay with that. That's what it's for, girl. Thank you so much because that's what it's for. I like even humans going to human – guys, because I get stressed, girl. Like I get literally like my brain is like what's happening? And I'm like they're just people being pe – they're not even thinking about it. They're like literally enjoying their moment. They don't even mean it. And even when they mean it, they don't even mean it. And then sometimes they mean it. And it's like it is what it is. And like that's how I've learned to honestly like love people more and be chill more. And I know it freaks people out. Like even with Merck, like it's hard for me not to see her and be like, dude – what a journey. Like if you had asked 26 year old Brittany also these questions, she also would have given answers that would have been just as like, you can feel the rebelliousness in it and like the desire to know more. And like, I always say like that rebelliousness is the opportunity for knowledge. So let them rebel because like they're going to seek out knowledge in the same way my parents let me rebel in some ways. You know mm. what I mean? Like you got to let people rebel. And at the same time, I already, you know, I even told her cause she asked me about trans kids and trans kids or trans people in schools. And I was like, look girl, I would love to have kids in a trans positive space, but like, you might not want that, but see how I want that. What do we do about that? That's the question. What do we do in a world where like, for me, that would be a benefit, but for you, maybe not a benefit. Who gets to decide what's the benefit? And then that's, that should stop the conversation and make you rethink. Because again, if you start from the end, 
which everyone always starts off on, even my own family, it's like, I know why that makes sense because we're all at the end right now. All we're seeing is like what we think is the end, but we came Mm -hmm. here for a reason. And usually it's about inclusion. Like my parents, my mom, there was a kid at her school who was allergic to latex, so balloons. Mm -hmm. And she asked me one time, like, do you think this kid should not be able to come to the party so people can have balloons? Or do you think like they should have um, no balloons at the party? And I was like, no balloons at the party. She goes, for one kid? And I was like, yeah, like these kids can experience balloons at like every other opportunity. And this is a school event, so no balloons. And she was like, really? And it was a good question to ask yourself, like, do we do it for the one or for the many? And it's like, well, not every time. But in this instance, this isn't the only chance these kids are going to see balloons in. But it's the only chance this kid's going to have to be in school with his classmates and have a party. So it's like, like, why aren't Mm -hmm. we doing it? But I understand that in their head, they're all thinking, yeah, but all the other kids don't get balloons. I was like, this kid gets balloons never. This kid is never going to be around a balloon, period. And you're concerned about your kids who are going to be around balloons every year, that they're not going to get it this one day? Like, we're not thinking. Like, we say we're caring. We say we care about our community. We say we want to help people who are disadvantaged. What about the balloon kid, man? Exactly. It's very true. It's very true. And also, it's like, like you said, it's sort of like these individual instances, just because it works in this case, it doesn't mean it's that for everything. Exactly. And I think when you do one thing for one thing, everybody thinks, oh, so then that means for like everything, that's yeah. what you want. That's yeah. what you want for everything. And life is not that easy. It's not that simple. Generalizations are not that simple or that easy. But it means that you have to do a lot of self-reflecting. It means mm. that you have to ask questions and you have to do things that you otherwise would not have to do and you can just go on your merry way sort of ignorance is bliss i guess yeah yeah well the generalizations are really like a sa- I, th- I do think they're like the safety thing um but you're right i hear that all the time where they'll say well Brittany, if humans are going to human then you're just going to say that towards every like horrible disaster that happens and i was like it's whoa like why does your brain do that like why does your brain go to such an extreme length or even with merc like like Wick and them were talking and I love Wick. Like, no, hey, we're going to talk Thursday. He literally, you know, was like, well, what's wrong with people killing people? And I'm like, whoa, why do we do this? Like, why does our brain go to the worst case scenario when there's so many like other, we have to do so much to get there. But I think people just do that. But by the way, it's never going to freaking happen. Like it almost never happens. It's a rarity. That's why we're so shocked by it in history. But they act like it's an everyday possible occurrence. And I just, I think it's their fear. Like fear is the root of all evil, I'm telling you. Okay, this is where I want to go from here. So tell me what you think. One, how are your spoons? I'm doing okay. I've got I've got a few left. I okay. do have a few left. Okay. Yes. yes, I do. Do you need a little bit of a break? Because what I would like to do is I would like to ask, because I saw the audience asking a lot of questions that we we could get to if you guys are if you're open to that since you're here like I could ask them to start flooding me with questions and we could start tackling it and having like a casual conversation around them. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Do you need a break at time. all? No, I'm I'm good. Unless you would like a break, I'm fine. No. You guys, you heard me. They're a few seconds behind me. Start giving us questions for kid. I saw you guys asking a lot of them. They can be either around kid or the subject matters we talked about. I saw some interesting ones come up that I missed about, I think one of them in particular was about, uh, when are you an artist? When are you a brand? When are you a person in this line of work? Ooh. And I think that's a good question to ask. It's a hard one to answer, though. Mm. Goodness. Do you have any thoughts on that? I think for me, it's definitely a process. Um, I think I'm an artist up until the point that my video goes live. Ooh. Uh, then I become a brand. And that's everything that I intended is completely like out of my control. Definitely. Mm -hmm. As I can see in my comment section, Mm -hmm. people interpret what I put out in their various ways, which are not the ways that I personally intended or saw it as. And that's really interesting to see. But at the same time, it's sort of out of my control now. It's sort of like I've let it out into the world. Mm -hmm. So I sort of transitioned from an artist into a brand at that point. And when are you I a think, person? Oof. I 
I feel that I'm a bit of a person and all of that, mm, I think. Mm -hmm. And especially just in all the surrounding sort of fluff and aspects about just that entire process, everything that sort of gets me to that point of making the art, um, being the brand and dealing with what it means to be the brand. Um, I think the person sort of underlies all of that and it's mm. just always there, just always the foundation of it all. But I think I get to enjoy that most and that being a person most after I've sort of let myself be a brand and then let it do its thing. And then I have to be a person in the world. Mm. I have to separate myself from the brand, the comments, the sort of algorithm, how it's doing. And I have to go out and like be a person in the world and live life. And that's when I enjoy being a person the most, um, I think. Yeah. Yeah. There's something like even today doing my podcast, I was like, well, do I, because I noticed my podcast voice is different than my live stream voice is different than my voice. Yeah, you're like, speaking about that. I have a podcast. I was like, oh my God, I have a podcast voice. And so like I was thinking about that. I was like, am I being fake? And then I was like, what I think I am when I monologue is I do think I tend to want a specific product for the consumer. So in my head, it's hard for me to get on a podcast. I tried, I tried like a practice run of doing a podcast where I didn't try to think of it being a podcast, like just talking. I didn't say much like I just kind of rambled and it wasn't much of something and I was like I would not want to watch this if I was a consumer but then I noticed when I watch other people's podcasts they're not supposed to be like thoughtful they're supposed to be like what are we going to talk about today so they're more natural but mm. since I'm by myself I also don't know how to do that and not have a goal for the conversation with myself so I will say it's hard for me with my podcast I want to be natural but I think my natural inclination is to be structured. <laughs> but then even the structure is kind of like not as structured as other people. So it kind of feels natural. Mm. I don't know. It's strange. And then you're right. I think the moment I hit that button, which, by the way, also <sighs> before I press public on a video, I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> even even a clip from a stream, even a clip from a stream. It's already been public before. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I have to what? I have to schedule it and then go to the gym whilst it's going live because mm. I, I can't I can't I have to be like lifting weights so that I'm not looking at my computer or my mm. phone or anything so that I'm just not because I'm freaking out. And yeah, so I can freak out at the gym. It's fine because everybody's sweating and huffing and puffing. That's so a it good looks method. Like I'm sort of. <laughs> that's yeah. a good I should do that. I should start scheduling because literally like when I press public and I even freak out I like go to the video and I check it I'm like did I mess anything up did I mess anything up like in terms of like did I accidentally dox myself somehow and again that makes no sense because like I don't even like I don't know why I have all these like crazy fears it's just weird I don't know and I, I don't know if I believe other youtubers are like I don't have that I'm like are you sure like is it just me like it feels crazy but I know I've talked to so many people they it's a very common fear Okay, that's good. That's it good. is. We're all in this together. No, I, mean, I promise you it's very common. Okay, so we've got a question about inceldom. Thoughts outgrown, move past. Sorry, terrible question form. Beautiful question form. Do you still identify as an incel? Yes, I do. Specifically like femme cell. Yes, I do. Uh, what, what's nothing a femme cell? Nothing has changed in that. Uh, it's basically the female equivalent of okay. an incel. Uh, okay. A woman who is involuntarily celibate. Um, yes, except yeah. very different sort of roots, mm. very different sort of explanations as yeah. opposed to sort of it being like the world is sort of responsible for why you are like this mm -hmm. and is the explanation for why you are involuntarily celibate. It's more mm -hmm. so to do with you and what your problems, your issues, your low self-esteem, um, very much to do with like things that really stunt you or disable you from actually being able to pursue relationships or to have sexual relationships but it isn't specifically about not being able to get sex mm -hmm. which tends to be incels equate sort of happiness and relationships to sex and that's sort of just it's just like sort of this straight and narrow um it is far more complex than that. And I think that's something that people just don't understand that sort right. of woman being involuntarily celibate 
it's not about sort of just having sex. It's about so many things, often to do with like trauma, uh, often to do with just not knowing how to navigate relationships or knowing how to pursue relationships definitely with sexuality and mm. having uh, complications with sexuality uh, definitely being um like for me personally bisexual it's been for me like impossible to <laughs> date women um it's been like really really difficult so yeah. yeah it's it is basically like sort of like the the equivalent of incel but very yeah. complex, very different, very nuanced, as is insult them, actually, when you sort of look into it. But yeah. Well, okay, there's no way if they were being honest with themselves, like they're not they're not literally involuntarily celibate because you could go hire a sex worker. Yeah. It's not about sex. Um, it's not about sex for them. It's not about sex for you. It's about the way you're having the sex, the way you're having the connection, who you're having it with. Otherwise, if it was about sex for them, they would go hire a sex worker. But it's not about having sex. It's about having sex in the way they perceive the sex and the way they want the sex, which is fair. We all want to be picked mm. and chosen mm. and pursued to some extent. We want to be we want to have a connection with the people we're having sex with, maybe to some extent. I don't want to project that onto everybody. But or assign that to everybody. But even when incels come to me and they say, like, women can just have sex with anybody, do you think that is valuable? Like, do you think that's what women are seeking? Like, so many of my girlfriends are what you would call a fem cell. Like, they are literally not picked, not pursued. They are not people – like, yes, if they picked any guy who's willing to have sex with them, they could get sex. But that's not what they're, they want. You know exactly. what I mean? And if yeah. anything, I think my female friends are probably more open to hiring a sex worker, if I'm honest, because at least then they know, like, what's what's going on and the sex worker's mm. not going to lie to them. Like, it's a business transaction. But yeah. it is one of those really ironic misconceptions of incel. Even the woman who created it, it wasn't that she couldn't have sex. It was that she couldn't even find women to have sex with because she wasn't in an area where she was meeting queer women. Yeah. Yes. It, precisely. Precisely. And I think so much of this really just for me is like not being seen. Like for some reason in the last few weeks, I've spoken like a bit about this to different people and like none of them will see it at all. Mm. They're like, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, you're a woman, you're a young woman, uh, you know, you haven't had lots of sexual partners. Like this makes no sense. Like this is bollocks. And I think that's sort of like, that's one of the roots of the problem that people just don't. Are any they of them pursuing you? See. No, no, mm. no. Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's like they're not like that. I don't think people are so in denial of the fact that they are, they are also, they're not, it's like they see the problem, but they're not actually like understanding why the problem exists and they're assigning the wrong thing to it. And I don't yeah. blame them because it feels obvious. Like people will say, um, like sex is like breathing air, Brittany, like any relationship needs sex. And I'm like, so I'm assuming we're not talking about asexuals and I'm assuming we're not talking about demisexuals and I'm assuming we're not talking about, do you know how many people I would have to assume we're not talking about for that sentence to make sense? Hmm. And that's the mistake I always see in these spaces where they're like, generally speaking, generally who? Who are we generally? Like who? Because so many of my female friends and I, I, they sound just like you and like you guys have a very similar story. Actually, one of my friends called me. She, I've, she's one of my inner circle. I've known her for like a billion years. She calls me one day and she goes, so thanks to my friendship with you, because you're so slutty and you, you like, you're just like so into sex. I realized I'm asexual. And I was like, shut up. And she was like, yeah, this makes so much sense for my life. Like I've had sex. I don't like it that much. She has it like every 10 years, you know, and it's like fun. And like, she's still every time she's like, mm, I could have gone without that. And I was like, yeah. And she's amazing. She's like so smart, multiple degrees, like so successful. But she's not someone people pursue because sex isn't a priority. She's a nerd. And she's like a, t a woman who's in an industry of male industry and she tops it. Mm -hmm. So she's not going to be pursued. And so when she does pursue, yes, men give her a moment, but it's for the sex that is like not her priority. So when people say like women could have boyfriends, could have – they could have a lot of things. But she's looking for a companion for life in a situation that is very unique to her. And also she deserves it, but it's better to be single and chilling. She has her own house. She's she's chilling, bro. But how nice would it be to have a companion? But this companion mm -hmm. would have to prioritize the companionship, which yes. is what even my partner and I talk about. I was just on a panel. I don't know if you saw it, but even Irrelevant and I were like, we're going to prioritize mm -hmm. the companionship over the sex. 
Mm-hmm. Like, yes, sex is good. We love sex. But I'm going to be with my partner even if we have to stop having sex because I'm prioritizing the companionship. And people are like, that's crazy. I don't get that. And I'm like, cool. Great. You do you. If you want to ditch your wife after 30 years because you can't have sex anymore, <laughs> super strange. But like then we're not doing the same thing, right? Yes. And that's what people cannot fathom. It's like we're not playing the same game, bro. That's what I say. Exactly. And the worst part is like I bet the same guys – I feel like I'm projecting here. The same guys that might even criticize you for being like, oh, no women are loyal, no women are loyal. The moment you have a woman that's like, yeah, I don't even have to se- have sex with you. They're going to be like, whoa, no. I need to have sex though. And I'm like, okay, is the, the sex we need or the loyalty we need? And I get sex is a very important part of your relationships. Don't let me like sit here and tell you you don't need sex. But I think you need intimacy and companionship and like to feel connected and seen and validated and dignified. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Tomorrow, like your partner could like walk across the road, get hit by a bus. And then what happens to your sex life? I mean, then, I mean, what do you do? I mean, you know, I think companionship means like so much, like it, it, it's such a big thing for like, I think for so many people, for me uh, personally, it's like a huge thing. Like it's something that. I think the thing that actually makes me want to like sort of throw up is thinking that I, what if I end up like married to somebody who just doesn't see me and that just, that freaks me, that, that scares me so much. And that is like sort of what I feel when people are saying to me like, oh, how can you be like, like this, like, that doesn't make sense that you're a femme soul, that you're like doing this or whatever. You could get anyone. And it's like, yes, I could. But like, based on like my past relationships that I was in, these were with people who refused to see me mm. like because I either wasn't black enough or I wasn't white enough Damn. or you know whatever yep and it just it was miserable and yes. it wasn't something like going your whole life being with a significant other who just doesn't see you Mm-mm. uh is just the worst thing the worst um the worst yeah yeah and you know it's perfectly I think it's perfectly valid to say that you don't want to be with somebody who doesn't see you and refuses to see you and um yeah yeah no people think they'll hear me say that and they're like you can't just have everything you want I was like first of all I can have everything I'm capable of having which is important I'm not delusional but there was no way I was gonna marry someone who didn't see me girl like I've been in enough adult relationships to know there's just no way it shows on my face I look at my partner and I look at them like I'm so disappointed in them like I look at them like "Mm," and then I'm disappointed in myself and then you're sitting in bed and you're looking at that person you're like who did I just let into my house and into my body and my soul and what am I doing here and it feels very weird to say I chose this I chose to not feel seen in my own home what was I thinking? Why did I put myself in this situation? And then all these people, again, who are telling you you're not loyal, you don't want a relationship, are the same people that are talking about having side chicks and one-sided relationships. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening with the internet right now, but this pocket of it is delusional in its own way, and I'm good not being there. But literally, the reason my partner and I, through our courting marriage, like the reason it expedited and went so quickly is when we were talking to each other every day for eight hours – But also, it was clear we both had the same intentions. We both wanted Mm. the same things. And if you asked him any of the questions I'm like saying, he would give you his version of the answer, which is very Mm. similar. Like, he was good. I didn't interrupt his life. It's not like he was in a relationship. He was waiting for this person. And I was waiting. I had, you know, we had both been single for so long. And we were just like waiting. And then we came across each other. And we're like, oh, there it is. Because we weren't going to settle and feel like alone in our own marriages. Girl, How many Mm. of these marriages get divorced and they say, I felt alone in my own marriage? I know. Loneliness in relationships is something that I've I've been reading a lot about now. And it's it's devastating. Absolutely devastating. Mm. I don't know why uh, people aren't paying it. They're all, Brittany, what's this loneliness epidemic? And I'm like, we're settling. We're settling for our friends. We're settling for our lives. And we don't feel seen. And of course we feel alone. No, 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 that's not it. And I'm like, okay. well, maybe not. Maybe it's not. <laughs> maybe it's not, not it. true. No, it's 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 so true. I mean, it was even. I mean, for instance, I know people like say to you, like, oh my gosh, you got married so soon, even though you'd been seeing each other for like a year or something. We like, got married after a partner. year, just after. A yeah, year, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you know, I, I, whatever. But even if it had been after like a week, yeah, I think like once you know your person, 
and you you, you found because I think sometimes you know with people there is just that like you are just yeah. so wholly seen by them that it's like why wait mm -hmm. we know we know mm -hmm. we see look, each other so purely so clearly kid okay. we did girl like we after like a week i was like hey i think something's going on and i was like i think something might be going on he's like yeah i think so too i was like well let's not be crazy let's check it out that's why we got our families involved it people have to understand you did not do what we did we flew to our countries, got our families involved, was interrogated, like asked questions, made sure mm. like we did a very thoughtful courting, dating, expedited version of like courtship because, again, we were sure, but we needed to be checked by the people we trusted the most. And how dare the Internet think they can check me on the most intimate decision of my life <laughs> when all of them have the most broken, mm. stupid relationships I've ever seen. I don't want to hear it. But like, so don't want to hear it. Like the idea that my parents or my siblings or my priest or anyone in my life wouldn't have, would have more, less insight into me than some people on the internet. The audacity of the internet to think they know you. It is so funny to me. And I get it, but they don't understand because I don't think they talk to their families. They don't, they can't even imagine that my like sibling, like my family was involved in this. Mm-hmm. And so they can't even imagine that. And I think that that's just, I understand that that's fair. Not everybody has that. But obviously, like, I even needed it for my own sanity. Like, hey, somebody check me because, like, I think I'm in love with this man. <laughs> like, somebody needs to check me. And they did. They, like, right away, they looked at him. And they were like, okay, Brittany, I think this is it. And I was like, yeah? Yeah? And they're like, yeah, he's the nicest one I've met so far. He's a good one. I was like, I know. He's all eight great. of your brothers. Yeah, like my all eight of it. They all no, no, not all eight. eight. Only six of them. Six of five. Six of them. Yeah, because the that's other still, ones. That's still really good. Oh, it was a lot of them. That's yeah, yeah. I think like five wow. or six of them were meeting him. The other two live in different places, but they traveled in and they all met him. They like interrogated him, and they it was great, man. It was a, what a great experience. It was just like, and he did so good, girl. Like they were kind of even like mean in the way that my family can be mean, and he just like laughed. He's so confident that he just kind of went okay, and they're like ah. Ah, okay because they've done this to my other boyfriends and my other boyfriends crumbled oh crumbled under the I'm pressure sure. i'm sure it was bad and they were like i can't see your family anymore you can't see your family they're like they're awful people and i was like oh i feel like you got a vibe with the family though and my partner's like oh i get your family like he was like okay yeah like they're weird but i like them and i was like yeah like they're conservative and it's weird his parents are so liberal his parents are so liberal that it's so weird for me. Like, they know I have an OnlyFans. They know I have YouTube. They know I'm queer. And they're just like, yeah, makes sense. And I'm like, okay. That's fascinating. Fascinating. Wow. Such a, I love it. I love having, like, a liberal mother-in-law. And we can talk about things. And she reads philosophy. And she, like, reads books. And I just – I love her so much. So anyways. It's amazing that you've brought these two worlds together. I'm it's just so like – I'm so it's oh so exciting God. and even my mom she tells me every day she goes you look so happy today I'm so glad everything's working out because you can imagine they were pretty afraid for me mm. that I would mm. I, that I was making like another mistake fair I have a track record <laughs> fair Did they think it was like a green card thing okay my mom was so convinced she's like what if he just wants to come to America and my dad's like well I feel like Croatia is so beautiful why would he want to come here and my mom was like I don't know everyone wants to come here and then we didn't we ended up here and she goes oh I trust him more <laughs> because we ended up in Croatia anyways <laughs> and so it's just funny like it's just you know they're worried for you of course but even they yes. were like, okay, we get it. Like, we we can see that you're happy and he treats you well. And honestly, I haven't complained once in over a year. So for them, they're like, okay, usually she complains within like two weeks of dating somebody. <laughs> and then she stays with them through all the complaining. But I really did get therapy after my last relationship. Yeah. And I don't think people understand. It really helped. Oh, good. It oh, really good. helped. So it made everything a little good. easier. Um, anyways, good. okay, enough about me. We got a super chat. Okay. From Do you Sam? mind if I ask you a question though oh, at some yeah. point? I tell don't, me. I don't tell me right now. I just wanted to ask. I was just so interested because you've moved to Croatia and everything. Yeah. How have you found it in terms of like, are you like trying to like make friends? Have you found it like uh, okay in terms of like the environment and adjusting? Because it is, I remember moving from like South Africa to England. And I mean, like that was like moving like from one like place where everyone spoke English to another place where everyone spoke English. And even that just mm. shattered me and blew my mind. And it was such a cultural shock. Yeah. Like how, how has it been if it's like not too personal, if that's. 
I okay. would love to talk about it. Thank you. Almost, okay. you know, actually, I think you're the first person who's really asked me. So like, let's talk about it. Um, and you're a great example because you've done it too. Okay. So first and foremost, I never knew I was going to leave America. Right. Girl, I never thought about it my whole life. Not really. Like I visited a couple of places like Belize and mm. stuff, but I never, ever, ever thought I would live outside the U.S. Just wow. never thought about it because like I am kind of a baby and I get I, I would be scared to move somewhere. Yeah. And so I couldn't imagine doing it. And I never thought my husband would be foreign. I just didn't even consider it. Like when would I meet him? How, how would I meet him? Mm hmm. And then I was like, oh, Discord, like who knew? But who knew? Who knew, right? I couldn't have predicted this. So of course in my head I'm going to marry an American. And here I was struggling to try to connect with all these American men who are all annoyed with my income. And I was like, what is going on? I don't even make that much. But, you know, I get it. Then all of a sudden I come to this foreign country and I'm realizing so much about myself. So here is where I'm at in this stage of my life. One, I moved to a place in Croatia by the coast that doesn't speak English. So I've been stuck a few times now with people on the road and they have talked to me and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I just speak English. And they're like, and they don't speak English. So we both just look at each other and we kind of smile. So no one speaks English here, really. Some young people sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. It makes me feel really safe in a way because everyone just knows me as a good customer here. Yes. Nobody knows me as like Brittany and no one bothers me and no one tries to get to know me. And there's something really freeing. I feel like I get to experience the world without being in it. Interesting. So Very I, interesting. I, I, I know what yeah. you mean. I felt that way when I spent like a month or so in Portugal. Like I, mm. I had that same thing because everybody spoke Portuguese. Right. But I was experiencing it, but I also wasn't a part of it. And it was yeah. the best time of my life like yeah. honestly that just yeah well it's like I love to observe people and talk about observing yeah. people like you're not and you don't know what they're saying so you're kind of guessing and you're like mm -hmm. I wonder what they're talking about or like we'll see families and we'll see them with their kids and the kids are so cute and they're like every kid but like they're little sitting there speaking like Croatian and being all cute about it I'm like oh my gosh like these little kids all have this language and they might not know English or maybe they will be taught English like my partner I'm not gonna lie his English is so good I forget he's Croatian he just, he's so American. He like knows my TV shows I grew up with. He knows YouTube. He knows like pop culture in America. And I'm like, yeah. it was like he was perfectly chosen like for me wow. because I meet his other friends that are Croatian, Croatian. And I'm like, oh, mm. we don't have enough overlap. Yes. It's really strange. So in some ways, he's like my little translator in this world. So it feels like I'm in a different planet in a good way. And I get to observe yeah. these people and how they live. And it's really beautiful and lovely. I have no plans to make friends here. Mm -hmm. for two reasons mm -hmm. one i feel like i have all the friends i need yeah two i feel like if i make new friends they should be online friends <laughs> you know what i mean i just feel like these people understand you. me better on the internet than if i yes. tried to meet a croatian who's in croatian culture doing croatian things speaking croatian and i'm like yes. i have to learn a certain amount of croatian just to be able to make friends and then what kind of friends would i be making yes yes so it just doesn't seem very efficient and then to be honest i don't leave my house Mm -hmm. I didn't leave my house when I lived in Arizona. I'm not going to leave it here. In my 20s, though, I just left the house every day. I never lived at home. I wanted to bubble hop my whole life. But now that I've made my perfect little bubble and I have my little ocean view apartment, it feels really weird to then say, let me leave this perfect place I made for myself to go into an environment that I don't even want to be in to meet some sort of social standard of having physical friends that I never wanted in the first place. Yes. So I feel really lucky. I feel like when I want to get out, I do. When we want to go for our walks, we do. When we want to go down to the bakery, we do. You know, when we want to sit outside, we do. It's just like I can do whatever I want. And mm. if I change my mind and I decide to involve myself with the humans, maybe I will. Now his group of friends, they also live within a 10-mile radius. And do we ever see each other? No, because they are also chronically online people. Even though they grew up together their whole lives. So and they communicate online. Yes. On Discord, even though they they play like they're D and Ders, they're nerds. They they came to our wedding. They were so sweet, and we all laughed. And they're like, "Oh, like we haven't seen each other in a year." And then the joke is like, "We'll see you in another year," even though we all live within ten minutes of each other. Maybe that will change. Maybe we'll see That's them. Brilliant. Yeah, it's just you know, there's something about like we're all so neurodivergent and all so good in our own apartments that when we do see each other, it's nice. When I see his friends again, I'll be so excited. But I don't think anyone in this group is in a rush. Mm -hmm. 
we're all just good. You know what I mean? So I have some access to some people. Mm. And maybe if those boys, you know, bring in their girlfriends, we'll all have group double dates or something in the future. But for now, it's just like we're so good where we are and I'm so good where I am that I don't feel the desire. And I talk to my family every day on the phone, so I feel pretty good about that. I don't know. I don't have this like pressure in my brain to go out and meet people. But again, maybe the language barrier is making it like less interesting as well. But then like how would I even – like what would I be getting out of it? You know what I'm saying? And then I'd have to tell people I'm a YouTuber and then that'd be really weird and I just – Exactly. Yes. I I definitely see where you're coming from. I think that there is something so like unique and so special in that sort of being somewhere and like experience something, but not like being a part of it, especially when you're observing everything and you're like analytical and you like to look at people and people watch and everything. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's, It's just amazing to just see that and to like see how people how humans human. Yeah. It's, great. it's really yeah. great. And it's, yeah, I, I definitely see where you're coming from. Yeah. And we have it's like, so we have our favorite spots. I think the waiters and waitresses are starting to recognize me because some of them like will practice Croatian with me very lightly and they laugh and stuff because I'm very bad at it. And then we'll kind of joke about it. And they think it's like, they've been very kind. Even our grocery store people, like they kind of know us now a little bit, but it's different than America. Like I would go to the Walmart in Arizona, which I loved. And I would talk to the people there for like 20, 30 minutes and all the clerks knew me and we would all talk it's different small town vibes this is small town vibes but people don't want to be a burden to you so they're very much like i won't bother you you don't bother me small talk is fine but it feels like we're all just trying to get home yes but also everything is so chill and everyone's at a cafe all the time Mm. it's like very interesting like i even joked because we would go to cafes for a while there we were going like every day now i'm making my coffee at home guys okay but like i was enjoying my cappuccinos at the cafe and every day to be like why are there so many people here in midday and he's like what do you mean i was like doesn't anybody work he's like you're here and i was like that's different (laughs) that's different that's different he goes no everyone's the same we all have like lax jobs or like this is what we're doing on our breaks or his mom would be able to come see us and i'm like oh like everyone's just so relaxed here Yes. It feels great. Yes. No, I, I, I know what you mean. That that feeling, like even, uh, yeah, yeah, that feeling like every everything just goes at a slower pace. Mm-hmm. And it's it's incredible. It's, it is. It's amazing just getting into that and just everything. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. I don't really yeah. know how to explain it, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's God. been good. I like it so far. I'm mm-hmm. not mad about it. Though I will say when I moved here, I was like, hey, can I see Kidology now? Like, can I, like, is that a thing I can do? Though I will say we're a bit far from the airports and traveling over to any other country. Okay, this is the one European experience I'm not having. I'm not having that American assumed experience where I thought I would come to Europe and be a train way, like a train ride away from everybody. Mm. Uh, There's not very good trains in Croatia. Like, that's not a thing Mm, here. Like, where I am at least, there's a bus system and I can get to Italy. Mm. So, like, that's a thing. But, like, I... I thought I was going to spend like 20 euro, jump on a train and all of a sudden be somewhere else. And that's not what happened. That's not happening. Mm. So getting out of my house would be a lot more work. Like we joked about doing a vacation once a year. And I was like, (laughs) we were both like, I don't know if we can recover from that. (laughs) Like emotionally. (laughs) True, true. Europe is actually a lot bigger and a lot more like detailed than it sort of is presented as like just get yeah. on the train and go. Also, I have a South African passport, so I literally can't go anywhere. What? Uh, getting to Portugal was such a deal. Oh yes, the passport thing is just. But they don't like your passport or something. No, no, no. South Africans, um, I can't, I can't go anywhere. Um, Shut up. If I do, I have to go for like visa interviews and mostly get rejected um, because <laughs> of my job. Oh my <laughs> so, gosh. Yes, getting into Portugal was a whole a whole thing it took like a year of like that whole process man i am so there's my u.s privilege showing girl it was so oh no it's fine i think nobody nobody gets the passport thing at all but like sort of the passport issue like globally that's a huge it's a huge thing like if you don't have a a european uh or a uh american passport it's just you know, that's why I get so annoyed online when, like, people, like, tell me, like, you know, like, about, like, how, like, unprivileged they mm. are because of something. I'm like, you have an American passport. Like, shush. <laughs> so, no, you're so like... right. You're so right. Okay, I brought my cat with me. 
over mm-hmm. like it, and I thought I was so nervous. I spent like eight hundred dollars to prepare her with the right paperwork, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh my god, they're gonna like kick me out of the country." Da, 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 da. I showed up with my U.S. passport, which I assume is the reason. I have to assume because I'm bringing a live animal into your country, and I was like, "Do you need to see my paperwork for my cat?" And they're like, "No," and I was like, "Well, but I." I got it though. I brought all the paperwork and they're like, no, Amsterdam, no, Croatia, no. And I was like, you, I'm bringing a live animal into your country. You don't want to see her. Like, what if she has rabies? And then like, I was like almost disappointed that I didn't check my paperwork because I worked so hard to get the right paperwork. And I asked myself like, why do I think that happened? And a big part of it is I wonder if it was because I was coming from the US. I don't know though. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It, 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 it's interesting it, it's weird it also depends on who who you get like you may get like True. you know lovely molly or like angry steve who knows True. But i remember when i came when i came back from portugal like it took at the border back into the uk i was questioned for a good 20 minutes about why i was coming to the uk i'm like I, i've lived here for like over six years like oh I'm, I'm trying to get home They're like really where do you live and asking me all these questions i'm like oh my gosh I, I sound so British. I, I, I literally am more British than most British people that I meet. And it's just, it really, like the whole thing, like just everything. It was just like, oh my gosh, like this, so, is, this is a real thing. Are you a permanent resident yet or no? Are you just temporary then in, I, I am, I'm indefinite leave to remain because I came here as a minor. And so oh, um, okay. I indefinitely can live here, but um, my passport is South African. Uh, so I, I literally indefinitely cannot leave here. <laughs> Wait, how do the passport bro- bros have like 10 passports? Passport bros, or well, the successful ones, they, I think it's, it's possible when you have a good passport, like one of those really good, like a US passport or like Israeli passport or something yeah. like it's really, you, you can sort of buy passports. I, I think it's it's very once you get the game of how mm. passports work once you have a good passport you can do anything Damn. you can get anything it's it's a ama- it's wild. incredible what it a bubble wild. bro the international but, bubble I'm telling you yeah. I'm so new to it I'm like I'm not even sure like we so we're in Schengen territory and mm. during the immigration process they were like hey you are coming up on your 90 days and if you don't file your paperwork on time because things went wrong I got rejected for the first application I had to redo it and to like get information proper because my job yes and I was like okay so like we're redoing stuff we're communicating like my job doesn't exist here so they're confused about what to do with me and so we're trying to figure it out but yeah like I don't have a job here technically and they're confused by it so there's a whole thing we're working on it though no problem and I'm like I'm reassured by that no problem attitude they got here they have a no problem attitude I don't know where it comes from but I it, you know, it's giving me comfort because I'm anxious about things. And um, there was just like this, what if things go wrong thing? So we're coming up and then I had to learn what Schengen is. And then I had to learn that, okay, if I go to this country, I'm still within territory. So I'm, I can't come here. My visa is going to expire. If I go to this country, I can buy me days. I had to like learn how to mm. buy myself time in territories. Yeah. It was so it's interesting. Crazy. It's such a different world. Again, never thought I'd leave the mm. U.S. So you can imagine oh, I'm like... Yes what is happening right now i did not prepare yes. myself properly for this trip mm. but here mm. we are it's working out slowly but surely good i'm so glad yes. to hear that so that's really yes. good any other Very questions good. on that front no that was i was just so interested in that because just hearing yeah. you speaking about it i was like oh my gosh this is so fascinating so yeah yes, thank you for indulging me oh my pleasure good question okay let me read your super chat because i feel like it's been sitting there for 20 years and i really appreciate it It says i'm this is from sound i'm going to start off off i'm going to start offering a stream at least once a month that features acting exercises for streamers there's no reason to feel bad about performance entertainment masks they are important interesting are you saying you're going to coach people into being characters for their streams that's what it sounds like. But I think of streamers as not being too much of a performance unless you're going to be like a Zerka or a Sneeko or something, which I could not Ooh. do. It sounds stressful. Oh, yes. And even that's hard to like sort of stay in character that long. And then if they meet you in real life, oh, boy. Oh, uh, boy. I, no way. What recently happened to Sneeko? I mean, Mm-mm. he's been labeled a groomer of like... Bro! F- <laughs> Bro. Okay, apparently I was being, I guess... People were like, Brittany, can you tell it's obvious that FD is trying to like satirically use that word against them? I was like, I, apparently fucking not. 
No, I didn't see it as satirical. I didn't he genuinely underst- meant. He had the same, the, the way that he was calling him a groomer is the same way that like alt conservatives call like drag queens. It like sounded groomers. the same to me. It's, exa- it's the exact same. It sounded the same. Like, it's exactly the I same. Tried, I tried different- to be open. It sounded the same. It was frustrating as fuck to watch. I hated every moment of it. I was like, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? I don't get it why they act the same. They're like, but I'm the bigger person. I was like, I. You're doing the exact same thing. The exact same hyperbole, the exact same fear mongering, the exact same just nonsense that helps nobody at all. I mean, these are like 12 year olds, like, come on, on the internet. Like, (laughs) like, literally, the vast majority of them will grow out of it. Like everyone does, like let people grow let people like experience things do things mm. like you know everybody it's and also like sneaker uh, sneaker is a lot of things but a groomer he is most definitely not like there are real groomers in this world literally like, let's let's look at them and let's call them what they are uh, but yeah sneaker is just <laughs> As I said, a lot of things, but not a groomer. Yeah, I can't imagine. Like, again, maybe I just put, maybe I just grew up with putting emphasis on that word as be like gaslighter. Like, it's in, it's, it's like in intentional. There's something intentional about your actions. I just can't imagine Sneeko's intentionally grooming 12 year olds to say transphobic things, right? He's influencing them to think this is what they should say. But like, are influencers groomers now? It feels like a misuse of the word. Mm. Even if he's trying to be satirical, again, I feel like, Again, everyone's different. So like maybe this works in FD's bubble, but obviously and the video was final like for his bubble, but it just felt like a, um, like a, you know, like for his people and his people only. And like, if anyone else watched this video, that wasn't them, it wouldn't be for them. And I'm like, well, what's the point of it? Yeah. Like what's the help here? And that's fine. But I just don't understand how you want the world to change. Exactly. I don't believe, like, I don't believe people when they're like, I want the world to change. Well, like, you got to be the change, bro. And, like, it sucks. And it's a lot of work. And it's exhausting. Mm. But, again, like, I don't understand this. It Mislabeling Sneeko as a groomer just – it makes people double down on defending his bad behavior because then they're like, well, he's not that. And if you say he's that, then, like, it just – it's all bad. Mm. I don't like it. No, I agree. I agree but I don't know. That. You know, what do I know? <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Z King wants to know, um, kid, how would you rate your overall experience as a content creator thus far? How would I rate my overall experience? I think it's been a bumpy road, but I wouldn't really have it any other way. Mm. I think it would have been a lot easier if I had sort of joined a tribe or a group. Mm. I think if I had joined the left bread tubers which was very tempting i think it could have been a lot more smooth sailing i'd have a lot more subscribers a lot more growth a lot more like sort of like loyal followers Mm -hmm. and everything i think it could have been i could have made this whole experience so much easier for myself yeah and sometimes i like will be like fretting about like money and everything and i'll kick myself and think why didn't i just do this why didn't i just do this why didn't i just like do this you know like one of my best performing videos was like me like saying all the things that like bread tube loves to hear yeah and it did so well and I'm like oh my gosh why can't I just do that now why can't yeah. I just say these things because it's it it makes my life so much easier but I think I, I don't know if I'd be able to like really live with myself in the long term I don't think I could do that long term I could do it in the short term but over time, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, it would just be too too disjointed. Why don't would... you? Why don't you ride the wave for a short term? Why don't you sell your soul for like a year? I couldn't do it. I couldn't. I, I just, I, I couldn't do it something 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 would something would just give it away i just feel that something would give it away just something i'd I'd do something i'd say something i'd be caught in something and it just as soon and i think with the bread tube the thing is as soon as you step even like a toe off the line they know and they don't trust you ever again Mm -hmm. and like you that's true 
ostracized, they're like, you know, condemned. Uh, and so, especially if you're a woman, ironically, mm. uh, they, they, it's not very <laughs> uh, nice to, um, I'd say, especially they're black women, uh, mm. not very nice. But um, yes, yes. I sometimes think, wow, my life would be so, so different if I'd done that. Uh, yeah. So, so different. But at the same time, I wouldn't really have it any other way. Sure, it's lonely, sort of like, you know, not like, you know, having a video where like I feature like all my like friends yeah. and everything. And we like, you know, have a little circle jerk together about, you know, making the world a better place with content and sponsorships. But I know that I, I couldn't, it just, it would cause me a lot more internal grief, I think. Yeah. Um, and the rewards just wouldn't be worth it. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you think, because like, this is what I struggle with as well, where, because I had opportunities, man. Like I was friends with all these like big progressive YouTubers at the time mm -hmm. and they would be shocked with me when I'm like, I don't feel like this is the vibe, right? And they're like, no, this is like what everyone's doing. But I think a part of them really believes it enough to like do it but then a part of them I know is in turmoil because they know how hard they're projecting this idea of like perfection that just like is impossible or reachable and so I wonder if like I know well I know they don't have like the most functional relationships with themselves or in a way that I could fat like I would need but I mm -hmm. wonder if they're just able to do it because they're like in that cycle. But I can't do it for some reason. And I wonder, I, is it self-preservation maybe? It's like a different form of it. Because like, I know they're not like ill-intended. I know they're not trying to grift. There's a difference between the grifters, mm -hmm. the people who are in it and they're like, this is what I'm supposed to do. It's like eating at them. But for like, because you know you would be grifting basically. Mm. It's different. But like, I don't even know if they know that they're like denying themselves a chance to be free of this obligation to make certain content. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely don't think that they're grifting, uh, at least like the main ones. I don't yeah. think that they're grifting. I think that it's just, I think it's so much, I wouldn't say just easier, but I think that it's just uh, so human mm. to sort of see everybody else as the problem and yeah. not you. And to sort of, I think, try to deal with a world right now where a lot of sort of people who are in the space of BreadTube and their following yeah. are sort of young people who don't have a lot, if any, political or social power, like real power. Yeah. And so to sort of blame it on some kind of bigger entity and all these grand narratives, which therefore explain why you can't do anything, why everything is against you, uh, I think it just it's reassuring, it's comforting, it sort of enables you to like live another day with a smile on your face, feeling that you're actually somehow implementing some yeah. kind of change, even if it is just changing the hearts and minds of people online. Um, yeah, I think it, I, I think it is, it's sort of, I think it eats itself though. Mm. It just really feels like, you sort of just don't get out of that when you're sort of in that mindset of um, especially perpetual like victimhood. Yeah. Everybody else is the problem and everybody else is imperfect and you ultimately are sort of like the example of what perfection is. I think you yeah. really undermine so many things. Like I know so many of these people who are in BreadTube are in the UK. They live like a town away from me we could be friends we could talk to each other we could like you know just because we're both we're all on youtube we could yeah. talk but they would never even dream of even talking to me just because i have like a view that doesn't align with theirs or what have you and i think that that's you just miss so many opportunities yeah. of you know experiencing the world and human beings and just life and all its complexities and nuance which yeah. are actually frightening but pretty beautiful in their own yeah. way um and i think that a lot of bread tube really does inevitably just stifle sort of the real like beauty of the human condition and experience um by being so insular mm. but at the same time i do feel that these people actually genuinely believe all of this and um 
there isn't really I, I don't really find a way to get like through to them or necessarily care to exactly I mean like I'm apolitical so therefore I'm privileged and so like you know obviously <laughs> but yeah yeah it's yeah it's interesting well, in the, you know, it's election season right now. So I always pull out like my, I'm feminist in spirit, not in politics. Like political mm -hmm. feminism is like very frustrating to me. I think it's just so short sighted. But like in spirit, obviously, like I feel very like queer focused. I'm the she, they, them, gays, all of them. I'm here for you kids. But in this election season, so I know Thanksgiving is going to be tense this year. Let me tell you, I'm already getting the text from my family like, the left is like destroying America. I'm like, yes, yes, we're all destroying America. And it's like, you know, we're all sitting here. All of us are just like these little reactions to each other. You know how it goes. Mm -hmm. And a part of me is like, look, my spirit lives outside all of this because, guys, this is exhausting and we're all like we shouldn't be doing this to each other, right? But then, you know, it's politics season, so you kind of got to jump back into it, maybe to vote or something, and then you jump back out of it. And I always tell people, like, I'm not involved in politics anymore, but I obviously have strong opinions on how I legally want to be represented in the states, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it is complicated because, again, my spirit says, like, well – I would love to outgrow like a conservative narrative that like LGBT people are bad for the world. I'd like to outgrow that without getting rid of the conservatives because my family's conservative and I don't want to get rid of my family. But also I would love it if their kids didn't continue this cycle of thinking. But also like if they do, I'm not going to get rid of that part of my family either. And that's the problem is like if we're not going to get rid of each other. We have to learn to get along and we have to learn to like live and let live because I'm not here to do mass suicide, like mass massacres or mass suicide or mass anything. I'm not here to do it. I don't think they're here to do it. So like, what are we doing? Like, yeah. if we're all not going to ruin each other and go to war with each other and do I don't want to do civil war, girl, <laughs> my skin, my hair can't handle it. Everyone always gets this weird heart on like, Brittany, don't you want to go to civil war? What, what the do you want to go to war? I don't want to fight people I know. I don't want to fight my neighbors. But it's like in spirit, let's fight on Twitter. And I feel like I get that. I really, I yell to my partner. That's what I do. I go to him and I'm like, oh, I'm going to vent to you right now about people being people. And I know they're just people, but I need to say this out loud. And then I vent to him and I go, Phew. actually, I tried to do that yesterday on stream. I was like, I'm going to prevent to you and then I'm going to get to stream. And then I still ended up venting the stream anyways. <laughs> eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Like, we're just people. We're not perfect. But yeah, I'm a little frustrated with the way that, like, when I'm in the bubble, I love the vibes. When I'm out of the bubble, I'm like, eh. And even when I'm in the bubble, eventually, I, that's what I mean. I love existence. I love hanging out with people. But eventually, I'm like, and I'm done. Yes. This narrative is fun for, like, the first 10 minutes. And then after a while, I'm like, and I'm done. That's why I can hang out with conservatives. Same. I can chill with the conservatives for about a while. And then after a while, I'm like, and I'm over it. And I'm over it. And I'm over it. And I'm over it until finally I'm in my own house. And I'm like, okay, I'm good here yes. in this space here. Okay. Anyways. Yes. Exactly. Definitely. What are you going to do? I'm telling you what are you going to do? Okay. Really fast. I want you to hear this one. It says, I hope Kidology knows that she has been missed. Oh, thank you. I've missed you too. Yes. Thank you. That's very, very kind. <laughs> we have missed you. We have a lot of questions. I'm not sure how many, but as I go through them, just let me know if you're like running out of spoons, okay? Okay. okay. I will do. We'll do. Thank you. This is a good question and it's a really hard one to answer, I think. Okay. What is a friend? Hmm. Oh, that is very hard. That is very, very hard. Are we friends? I'd say yes, yes. But at the same time, I think we need to like qualify like sort of what type of friend yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think there's there's different kinds of friends, different categories of friends. And I don't think they're universal at all. I think everybody has their different like sort of categories and sort of criteria of their friends. You know, I, I have friends that I don't speak to for like a year and then we'll just speak and I'll be like, we've haven't even been separated for totally. any amount of time. And then I have sort of friends like you who we don't we don't have like a sort of personal relationship, but then I'll reach out to you and you'll respond to me and then we'll talk and it will be like so meaningful, like to me yeah. at least. And Same. it's sort of like, wow, that's amazing. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that would last if like I was to leave YouTube or if right. you were to leave YouTube or something like that. Right. Um, but in the moment and at this point in time, it's like incredibly valuable. 
but I don't know. I think a, a friend for me is somebody who, and I've said this like throughout this stream, so forgive me, but like somebody who like just sees me mm. and accepts me for who I am. I know that all my friends in my life, they know that I'm terrible at communicating with them. Yeah. They know that I never check my phone, that I never respond to messages. But I also know that when I'm having like a breakdown or whatever, or when I do respond to them, that they'll be okay. And that they'll be like, okay with the fact that I'm just a complete pariah mm. and just, I'm like non-existent. Um, I think one of my friends put it best. She said that, you know, if I get kidnapped, I know not to call you. Like <laughs> if like I somehow get a phone and like I can call somebody like quickly, like to like save yeah. me, I will not call you. But I still, I still love you. Yeah. And I thought this person, this person gets me. They get yeah. that I'm not, that I'm not that friend who is, I'm not a good friend at all. Um, that has been something that I've had to really come to terms with mm. personally, that I'm not a good friend and that mm. I have to really work very hard in like being a friend with people. Yeah. Or have I frozen for you? You have frozen. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me quickly, I'll be right back. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're talking about friendship. Are you still good on spoons? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm okay. still good. I'm okay. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. okay, because friendship is something that I guess for me, like, I will tell you I have a really hard time with this because I'm like, yeah, everyone's my friend. Who cares? Like, everyone's my friend. I don't care. The dilemma is that I, that's why I have, like, an inner circle outer, which, by the way, parts of the internet are wild because they're like, oh, Brittany has, like, tears of friendship. That's insane. I was like, no, it's not. And if you think it is, you are absolutely insane. Like, there's no way – Y'all treat your friends the same. Like, who are these friends you're all treating the same? Like, who are these people in your life that you mm -hmm. give universal access to? So, like, I have tears of friendship, too. And I put you in, like, the second category, which is, like, inner outer circle. So, like, contact me. I'll hit you back. I consider you a priority. But you're not, like, inner circle where, like, if you called me at 2 a.m., I'd be like, um, girl, we got to negotiate. <laughs> you yes. got to negotiate emergency calls here. Mm. Um, But, like, inner circle is, like, people I think I will know till I die like I will grow old with friends or yeah. family and everyone else I'm just honored to know you like I wonder will we know each other when we're 50 oh that's what I think about like you imagine me you and Kyla all sitting around like what's up guys we're like 88 years old like, I don't know but how fun to know each other now but how am I supposed to know if we're gonna know each other when we're 80 exactly exactly wow interesting because I think we're all just so caught up in this idea. Well, I, I don't think you so much, but I think like a lot of people online and I guess myself as well are so caught up in sort of the present and mm. now. We don't even fathom the prospects of being online at like 90. I think you said somewhere like you can't wait to be like 90 years old on OnlyFans and everything. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Actually, yes. Yeah. That's that's like, yes yeah <laughs> so it was like it's 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 really really interesting to think about those things but I think a lot of us and I think myself definitely at points are really scared to think about that yeah like gosh what will this space be like when I've got wrinkles what if it's just the same what if we're literally all sitting here like based we're like 80 years old you know what I mean canceled but like you know because look old people are on the internet now and I know it's fresh but, like, it's going to change for us, and we're going to be there. Yeah. And I kind of like the idea of being there. Now, look, I'm open to the fact that old Britney might not want to be on the internet, but there's a version of me that exists, and I hope she's there. I hope at 80 I'm literally doing, like, nude art, like, very cool grandma art. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm, I yes. think it's a vibe. Yes. Your gray era. Oh, my gosh. You look so good with gray hair. I can't hair. wait. I can't. I'm stoked. I got my first gray hair, actually. It's so – in, in real life, you can see it's so distinct, and I found it, and I was like <gasps> – it's happening. It's happening. I'm stoked. I'm stoked about it, girl. What you look so good, though. You look I'm stoked. So I'm so excited. I'm, I'm not, oh I'm not dying my hair anymore. This is it, girls. Good for you. May my good gray come you. in. May my gray come in, you know. And it's also for health reasons, for the for the fibro. Like, it helps mm -hmm. with inflammation. But literally, mm -hmm. um, oh, my hair again. Caught my finger right here. <laughs> like, this is, this is what an experience to have, right, with yourself and to think about the future and to think about friends. I remember Abba and Preach – because Abba and I have been in contact for like a while or he's known who I was for longer than we've been in contact as friends. Mm. But even Abba, he'll call me to tell me this, tell me how the universe works. Every time this man calls me, I'm streaming. He goes, I didn't know you were streaming. I was like, how is every time you call me, I'm streaming. And then we'll talk and people will be like, oh, you and Abba must be really close. Abba and I have only spoken on stream 
and when we saw each other in Miami, but I love him. Such a gentleman. No bad things to say about ABBA. But one of those things where like, I don't know when time will give us a chance to be closer or if it will, but I'm so grateful for the friendship we have now. And I try to accept friendship the way it's presented instead of wanting it to be more than it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something I learned because of my borderline and because of my therapy and because of the way I would kept feeling abandoned by people because I would mm -hmm. invest all this time in people and be like, we're going to be friends for a long time. Right. And then when we weren't, I'd be like, well, now I'm confused. Am I the problem? Is there, am I being abandoned? I can't tell. And what it is, is I think people don't know how to say, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. It's super uncomfortable. Yeah. So I try to make a space like very open for people to break up with me. Mm. just like let me know because i'm all about consent so breaking up a friendship yes. with me is about consent mm. um but yes. also it allows me not to live for the potential of a friendship Let's see in the same way i don't yeah. want to live for the potential of a romantic partner mm. i just want it yes. to be what it is yes very interesting very interesting very true as well yeah yeah definitely are you, oh, that's hard I'm curious though, because this is where people usually have a hard time with it. I think because everyone's looking for this like anime guild or this like best friends club or this like I see you every weekend for brunch, which to be fair in media is what has been expressed to us like sex in the city, like friendship, which I mm. love, don't get me wrong. But like, I've never had the luxury of living in the same place as my friends, not as an adult. Yes. Definitely. So where is Definitely. this like weekly brunch going to happen, girl? exactly and then how, how do you navigate a friendship that doesn't fit into this entire at least this sort of pop cultural idea of what a friendship is mm -hmm. and then nothing seems good enough nothing right. seems right and then you just self-sabotage any prospect of friendship when it doesn't meet those sort of standards mm -hmm. i think i've had to really accept that especially now that like a lot of my friends um my friends who are like I don't actually have any friends who are my age, but who are like around my age are like now getting married or having mm. children that now like our friendship is not like sort of a priority or sure. that I'm not going to see them all the time, but that that's, that is how life works. And that is how they are becoming more themselves. The person who mm. I love, who I value, who I want to live their best life. Even if that doesn't mean that I'm sort of, the priority in that yeah at points i am you know i get invited to like you know a birthday like lunch or whatever but it is like you said sort of valuing that time that you have and appreciating that and i think that's quite it's quite hard and it's quite hard to like accept that you may be the main character of your life but not of other people's lives and not yeah. of sort of the characters in your life and sort of having to reconcile yourself to that but i think when you do um it can be incredibly rewarding as well yeah i've heard that some feedback from some of my friends where they're like i just want someone to make me a priority and usually you're right your friends can make you a priority for a while but then other things come into their life maybe even their jobs like for me it always came down to i think jobs where my friends have really cool jobs and those jobs had location-based obligations mm. and so i always wanted them to go seek out their jobs because yeah but the problem is is that even their jobs don't seem to be enough always and i wonder what are we doing with our lives in which it's never enough oh what are we doing with our lives in which it's never enough like if you make your job your priority and you move away but then you mm. want people to make you a priority. It's like, but you made your job a priority. The inherent contradiction of the human condition. It's just. Oh. And also, can I tell you, my siblings oh, and I, because we lived with each other in Arizona, a few of us, obviously not all of us, but a few of us. And we'd take these neighborhood walks together. It's like my family loves to walk together. And we were mm. walking and there's this cul-de-sac that's for sale, you know, with like five houses in it. And I was like, oh, what if we bought all five of the houses? And he's like, oh my gosh. And then we could all live in the houses. And I was like, and then we could see each other every day. And then we laugh because it's like a fantasy. But our jobs don't work that way. And our lives don't work that way. And our kids don't always like work that way. And we don't even get along 24 seven. So we can't build our lives around each other. It just makes no sense. But at the same time, like I love my family. 
like Abba was so sweet. He reached out and he's like, hey, I just want to make sure like you're good living so far away from your family and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, I'm in my seclusion area. Like I'm in my isolation era where like I'm just isolating, you know, and doing my thing over here. But when I miss my family, I'll just fly them out. But again, my family can't always, my, like my siblings don't have jobs where they can just take off to go to Europe. Yes. So again, like, and then what? So Brittany has to do it because she's the YouTuber. But like my job, I work seven days a week. I also can't just get up and go because every day I don't stream is every day I don't end up consistent for the audience and I don't show up. And then it doesn't work. Like this job, you have yeah. to be consistent. Exactly. So it's like, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to be grateful that we live in a world of technology and I can Marco Polo and Snapchat my family. Yes. That's what we're going to do. Exactly. Exactly. We can't always get what we want. But we can get like close to it and we can make it work. We, uh, I think. Yeah. I think we get what we need a lot better than what we want. Yes, definitely. And I think... I feel that we always are trying to prioritize what we want over what we need. Yeah. And it's, I think that that just dooms us all, uh, definitely. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I think it's really hard to believe because I think you need far less than you want, right? And it's hard mm. to believe this thing that is requires far less could satisfy all of this want I want. But it's not supposed to satisfy your want. It's going to satisfy your needs and then it's going to make you want less. And it's also going to make you understand the value of want. Like my partner and I were by the bay taking our walk and we saw this yacht and it was like a huge yacht, dude, like the biggest yacht I've ever seen. And I was just looking at him like, who owns this? And we Googled it and this like billionaires on our coast and he's parking his yacht here. And I'm sitting here like, do I want a yacht? And he like looked at us and we're like, do we want a yacht? We're never going to get a yacht, dude. It's like $20 million. And I looked at him. I was like, what if we became people who wanted yachts? What if we were in that bubble where we're like, we're going to get a yacht. You think I'd prioritize any of my friends? <laughs> I need to make money to buy a yacht. I'm not even going to prioritize sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, for like the Elons of this world to get to where they are, they can't prioritize their wives, their kids. His kids. He never. Ma'am. Please. Oh, yeah. All these people that are like, Elon's a great dad. I was like, does he tuck his kids in every night and reads them a book? No bullshit. He has eight kids with like different women just because he, he thinks his genetics are worth procreating. And I'm like, bro, sit down. Again, I'm not saying you shouldn't be Elon Musk or you shouldn't be any of these people. I'm saying know who you are and know what you can have. You can't have you can't have your cake and eat it too, girls. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And it's okay. It's okay. It is really okay. It's absolutely okay. I think that like uh, that lack of radical acceptance is what is so difficult. That's why I would say like all these old sayings we keep hearing, that's it, girl. I already, like I tell my audience, you don't, I don't know anything you don't know. I'm just implementing it differently. Mm. So when I hear like you can't have your cake and eat it too, I literally for the longest time, girl, I did not even know what that meant. I had to do this. Oh, okay. I got it. Like I can't eat it and have it too. Like I had a visual representation for the longest time when I was a kid. I was like, I don't get it. Cause I was like, why not? And then I was like, oh, I can't eat it and have it too. Oh fuck. Okay. So what do I want? Like, what do I need? Like, what is the thing? And it took me forever to realize like all these old sayings, they really do make a lot of sense. You just have Mm -hmm. to implement them differently. And I think people don't want to believe it. And yet they'll, the irony of people Brittany, you can't have the life you want, but also like I want this thing that's totally impossible. You can't tell me I can't have it, but also you can't have this thing. And I'm like, I just, okay. Yes. Humans kind of human. (laughs) Humans kind of human. Anyways, anyways, friendship is hard. What is it? In this space, it's fucking confusing. It's the most confusing thing I've ever seen in my life. As you guys know, my best friend in the whole world... (laughs) We broke up. It's like the weirdest so space. Oh, you know, and it happens. Girls fight all the time. But it's like one of those things where like, I don't even know what's going on half the time. And I'm like, I don't get it. But like, I get it, but I don't get it. And I'm like, that's why I'm like, don't say we're f- like close friends. Don't do that. And that's what people have to understand. Like they confuse what friends mean in this space. And then they don't understand how to deal with any kind of conflict in a friendship. And it's very confusing. So somebody pointed this out with like my inner circle. When we fight or argue, we never worry about our friendship. Mm. So when we fight and argue, not being friends is like not even an option. 
So we have to problem solve the disagreement. We've made a commitment, right? Yes. And that's the energy I want to bring to this space. Look, don't pretend we have a commitment to one another when we don't, right? And if we're going to have a commitment to one another, we have to negotiate that in private. We have to talk about it. You know, one thing Kyla and I are actively trying to do in our friendship is talk in private. Mm -hmm. Because it changes the dynamic of the friendship. Yes. And you're saying I'm making more of a commitment to you. Even if I can't make you a full ass priority, I'm making you enough to talk behind closed doors for at least 10 minutes of my whole month. Oh my gosh. Wow. But that's a bigger deal than doing zero. Wait, what? I said yes, destiny. Yes, exactly. (laughs) I'm just saying, look, I, I want to be like, look, I'm 34 and I'm old. And at this point, we all know better. We all know better. Absolutely. Yes. So why aren't we being better? Why isn't it? Why is it so hard to just have the conversation? Because it it means an, a level of intimacy that like we're not ready to have, but then we can't say that. Mm-hmm. And it's so frustrating, but it all it's also so normal. And I want young people, especially who are watching this, to understand like this is like the level of friendship you're having has to be clearly negotiated. You cannot project onto people like intimacy or expectation. Because look, what if I had? What if I was younger? And I had expected a very specific kind of friendship. What if this had devastated me? What if this had made me like, like lose my sense of self? The fact that his audience comes after me all the time is so like, girls, come on. Like I've not, I've been on the internet too long. So it's okay. But like if I was younger, Brittany, this would have been mm. so devastating. Yeah. And I'm so lucky I've already done this a, a few times with YouTubers. But like, yeah, the moment people are uncomfortable, they blast you and then they disappear on you. And I'm like, ghosting? what are we five? Are we ghosting? And the problem is like, I can't even blame them because honestly, like I get it. It's really uncomfortable to have to like realize like your friends are friends with you and they still think you're not perfect. Oh no. So what is friendship to me? Friendship to me means knowing we're not perfect and finding a way to make peace anyways. When you said, I want to be seen, I just want to be seen a little bit. I have a very low requirement of friendship. See one part of me and we're chilling. Mm-hmm. but to not even like to see that and then to think like it's going to be enough to sort of like be intimate I think is the mistake where people go but you saw my my love for anime and I'm like yeah that's one part of you my bro yeah so I think in yeah, this space sure. it's very confusing what is friendship even like even people who came at me about Sneeko where they're like, well, you know, you're friends with him. So that's why you're giving him leniency. I am no friends with him. No more friends with him than I am with anyone else. Like, what is this illusion everyone has that I'm only going soft on Sneeko because he's not 26 and not a kid to me and not any. No, it's because you're friends with him. I'm like, I have criticized him the same way, just nicer because he's yeah. once again, mid 20s. And everyone keeps ignoring that fact. And that's why the friendships in this space is so confusing. Yes. And I'm I'm insanely frustrated with it, honestly. I'm not even bored of it because that's not the right word. I am frustrated. Where I'm like, are we going to do better? Is this going to happen in my 40s and in my 50s and in my 60s on the internet? Are we going to be literally 60 years old with gray hair having this same conversation? I think we will, actually. I really, I, I have hope. But still, I think we will. Yeah, probably, right? Isn't that funny? Like, that's what I'm saying. What is this life that we're all, like, sitting here living through? Yeah. No, I I do feel we are just having the same conversations, like, Mm -hmm. at at the root of it. It's the same conversations with the same remedies that we just are not going anywhere near. It's like we can see the remedies, but we just don't want to touch them don't want to go near them because it's just too it's just fear it's too close to like ourselves to who we really are and I think to aspects of other people that we just do not want to get near it's it's just so much more comforting I think and just so much better to live in an ideal of how things are and how people are well I guess the question is like what could we do different like, what is this it? Like, am I, am I radically accepting? So am I practicing the radical acceptance? Like, this is it for the next, like, 50 years. The cycle is going to be make friends, break bridges, make friends, build bridges, make friends, burn bridges, make friends, burn bridges. 
Or is it going to be like make friends, go our separate ways? Like what is the goal? Like what is the, what am I looking forward to in this space? Should I always just be solo, meet people, but keep a distance? You know, I'm always like deciding like, should I get closer? Mm. You know what I mean? Should I do this? Should I, are people here with the best intentions? Oh my God. Somebody just asked in my chat, are we going to be 60 year old YouTube chatters? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm going to be. And that's the oh, thing. Yeah. Like, I can't even be mad about any of it. I can be, I'm severely disappointed, honestly. Because I'm like, I thought I problem solved this already. But I didn't. So like, what do we do different? And is this like me just being like, is this me just like, this is my fun. This is what I'm like, how do I problem solve this? I think solving things, there's just no, there's just no like linear sort of like teleological projection toward like solving something. True. You solve one thing and it just, innumerable amount of problems just explode as a consequence of solving like one thing. Yeah. Once you answer one question, it just opens the floodgates for even more questions. True. And I think inevitably, no matter what you do, when you explain something that applies to like one thing, like sneaker, somebody's going to say, oh, so therefore you mean that for everybody, mm -hmm. it means this, or um, that you're justifying something else or what have you. I think nuance is just, you're just digging a deeper hole every every time there's just so many layers and i think we just are going to be caught up in this i do think however we could do a lot better i think if people were a bit more philosophical and read a bit mm. more philosophy i think it could really help a lot um but we also live in a time now i think where everybody thinks that they're an expert and that they mm. know everything and so you're trying to also like deal with everything and also this like wall that is just I feel in front of so many people and so many conversations where everybody just thinks that they have the answer and that they know everything and are just not willing to even engage with conversation at all or any kind of like questioning of their expertise and so I think that that for me is the most frustrating thing mm. that sort of not even there being a prospect for that conversation that would make any kind of resolution or any kind of like bridging or any kind of like understanding possible that that is just already there and that's just that blows my mind i wonder if this word like resolution is so interesting to me because it indicates sort of like um, an agreement. And I'm trying to figure out how do we come to an agreement? And then, okay, like with Rora, we're going to talk on Thursday with her and Wick. And I told Rora in, in private, I'm really excited to talk to her because again, I'm not trying to tell anyone what to do in this space. But I do kind of feel like if people in their 30s are going to ask people in their 20s to be better, we better be better. True. And I am sick of people so in their true. 30s talking shit on everybody on their 20s and they're not doing better. And so Thank like, you. again, we're not in like a community. We're not in a cult. Like we're not obligated to one another. We don't even have to be talking. But I am kind of sick of it. And again, we use this word friend. We use this word coworker. We use this like, with, and I think it's like, it proves something. There's something here that's wrong. There's something here that's going terribly wrong. Even mm -hmm. the fact that you and I are talking, some people are claiming, oh, Brittany's just trying to get like in Destiny's sphere again. I was like, you don't kid and I know each other. Like we all know each other. <laughs> like Destiny is so like, in the, it's not him. It's his like, is allowed. it's the sphere he's allowed in this like context. But like mm -hmm. he is in every, every podcast I watch has had him on it. So I'm like, okay, the universe is trying to tell me to finish this problem. This is like my new, this is like my, my Destiny gate. <laughs> like This is my friendship gate. It's not him. Like it's not, him that's the issue it's me because i'm frustrated at something within myself that i can't solve with this problem right mm -hmm. and i think i'm frustrated with the fact that like maybe it's the fact that like i wasn't heard or seen and that makes me confused because i was like what happened i thought we were vibing and then another part is it like was i too arrogant was i too mean and then i was like well i'm always that so that can't be it and like he's definitely that so that can't be it <laughs> Right. And yeah. I'm like, what well, what is it? And it's really, I think this space is so scary.
because you're being vulnerable online. You're having personal conversations on the internet. Your life is under fire. And I, this is just a theory that the vulnerability has gotten so bad on the internet that everyone does have to put like an arm out and say like, I'm not taking the chance. But then why mm -hmm. do we keep taking the chance? And it's because we're desperate to be seen, right? Yes. We're like desperate. We keep doing it. And so we must want something from this space, whether it's a friend or whether it's just a to be seen or a connection. And I don't see it slowing down for anybody. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, no one's slowed down when making friends or connections. Yeah. And since our life is built off networking, especially this sphere, right? It's like, well, then what are we doing here? But I think it is asking too much of individual streamers to face their childhood trauma <laughs> in order to fix their friendships on the internet. So then what can we do as a community? And should we even start forming one kid? This is a big mistake. If we form a community, then we're putting a community standard and now we're making our own bubble. And then if somebody doesn't adhere to the community standard, they're kicked out of the bubble. And then all of a sudden there's a new fight. It's really dangerous to start a community. Yeah. Because like right now we're all individuals who talk. That's why I hate the orbiter bullshit. It is so dangerous to attach your name to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And yet there's right. a whole part of the internet that it keeps encouraging it in a way that I'm like, stop doing this. Yeah. Because like, again, what cult are we in here? We should not, our names should not be associated with each other that way. So like, I don't want to encourage it, but like, then the question is, why do we keep wanting to connect? I know, it's crazy. It's like, it, it feels like self-sabotage. Like, it sort of reminds me of, like, marriage. Like, why on earth do people try to form relationships and mm. marry each other when, like, the likelihood of divorce is just, like, skyrocketing? Like, why do this? Why do you keep doing this? Why do you keep reaching out? Why do you keep trying to form these connections with somebody yeah. who you may not be with? And it's just, I think it's just, like, faith. It's just, you know, non-guaranteed faith. And I think that that's all we really have as people in all spheres of life and everything. We just have to have faith in just this experience and just this journey or this thing that we call life. Because yeah. if we don't, then what is there? And I think it's the same with just being in this space as well. It's just we have to have faith that what we're doing, that there's, there's, there's some kind of meaning to us mm. and I think in forming these connections and reaching out to people and like sort of virtually touching people it's like somebody is like telling you like yes I see what you're doing and I'm doing it too and it's okay and we're going to get through this we're going to move forward yeah and I think that means so much and is so crucial and just something at least for me that I cherish so much like when you responded to my email I was like oh my gosh like this is Oh my goodness. That was like that spark. And I was like, oh yeah. my gosh. Okay. When I got the I email, the <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, kid emailed me. I was like so excited. Yeah. For all those people saying that, like you're trying to orbit, like I reached out to Brittany, like I, I like initiated like contact. I wanted to like talk to Brittany. Yeah. Was, but also <laughs> you're like, as if it's not like I know you through him. Right. It's like, why would I, I know Ab and preach on my own. I know Sneeko. I'm the one who told Sneeko to talk yeah. to destiny. Like again, like this irony of like what people are imagining. And again, it's not their fault, but it's also like something is, something is like interesting about like certain spaces. Again, I've been, I've been collabing with YouTubers for so long. None of them have had this hat. Like never, this is a new bubble for me. I've never mm -hmm. been in a bubble where like, oh, you're now in blah, blah, blah's orbit. I've mm -hmm. never had that happen. And I'm talking about bigger YouTubers and like millions of subscriber YouTubers. Yeah. So I'm like, what is so different about this space? What does this bubble have that other bubbles don't seem to have? Again, this is my mystery to solve. I'm like, what is so different here? What is it? Is it like the facade of talking deeply? Like when Mr. Girl came onto the scene and everyone's like, oh, <coughs> oh my God. I just joked on my own hair. You mentioned Mr. Girl. It was just like your body was like, no. The universe is like, no. But like literally, is it just like him facading like authentic conversation that make, made people think this space had it? You know, it, it's, it's so strange. I sort of like look at this space as like sort of like a contemporary like Athenian marketplace of ideas. Like sort of, it's like everybody's like bestowed like destiny as some kind of like Socrates and like you're yeah. sort of like Plato and people don't like like that exactly and Destiny's a bit like off put by that I think because mm. you make him sort of like think a bit too 
introspectively about his choices and things in a way that he doesn't like. Um, Maybe. That, you know. I, 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 feel, that, the I only, feel like you I feel... get a bit too close to the scent of him and he doesn't like that exactly. Um yeah, maybe. Content. <laughs> and the characters and all of that and the all, but um, it's like they're trying to create like a sort of play, I feel, like sort of orbiters with different characters. The way that they talk about people, mm. it's sort of like, you know, oh, you know, Lav Luna was a great character for this season. And it's sort of like different like seasons. It's like yeah. this whole thing. Like people are sort of not people exactly. <clears throat> they're sort of characters in this like, in this weird sort of fable or this weird sort yeah. of Socratic dialogue. Uh, where you want to be able to predict what each character is going to say and sort of who they are and what they do. Um, and so it isn't really real, but at the same time, it's very real for these people and yeah. DGGers especially. Um, so, yes, I, I, I don't know. It's it's so weird. It is very, very strange. Yeah. Like, I've only spoken to Destiny, like, twice. <clears throat> I've never, ever spoken to him, like, ever yeah. like, again. And still like people like say that like you know i'm orbiting or something like that it's like uh, uh, okay but it's it's it is very weird i get what you mean it's very, like even very the, think about the progressive spaces you like even know about like fd and khadija and all them mm. does anyone use that word no nobody uses that word what is no. it about that like it's so weird and i'm like what is it i'm gonna crack this mystery i swear to god like there's something so weird about this bubble where i'm like see the universe sent me a bubble i don't understand so i'm like what's happening what's going on because like yeah this doesn't happen in progressive spaces it doesn't happen in feminist spaces it doesn't happen in queer spaces that i've seen why is everyone orbiting what is this word why is this a word like why is this a thing and it's like is it because it's like it is like what you said it's like a gathering of ideas and people and they can come together and then it's like it's almost like a village did he create a vi a, a, a like a village oh my gosh potentially potentially yes like a virtual village it's a very weird village because it's not exactly like <clears throat> on the left yeah or like progressive but it isn't like anti-progressive either so it's sort of like a bit of an outlier village that sort of is a bit more susceptible to like ideas and sort of philosophical introspection a little bit more. Mm. But then at the same time, it sort of is a bit like sort of boys club, you know? Mm. <laughs> so it's it's really a, a, a weird mixture. And I think that creates sort of, especially for like members and even orbiters, sort of this allure of being like sort of philosophers or like philosopher mm. kings even yeah um, yeah i definitely get that that sort of vibe from them it's interesting but it's weird as well because some things are just unpredictable like i never saw you and destiny's friendship like ending i i, mm. I never saw that happening at all and it, it's I, I am also shook <laughs> I am literally shook. Like that day when I told him, talk to me in private, it was because like, I was like, I don't know what's going on. Talk to me in private, like about your shit. Cause like, obviously like I had some arrogance in my brain, obviously. Cause I was like, why are you so mad? Everyone talks shit on your relationship and you like, you let people in your sphere that have literally tried to ruin your life multiple times. And I've never tried to ruin your life. So what are we doing? And then like, that's why I don't think it makes sense. I'm like, nope, something is wrong here. And I'm gonna figure it out even without him or I don't care but like I will figure it out for my sake right you know how I want to know everything about myself mm -hmm. I want to know yes. why I was so shocked this happened because should it have been obvious to me no I, I don't think so I don't think so I don't think so yeah I feel like I don't know I mean obviously he liked me and obviously, like, I like to Oh, and you too. still live in his mind rent-free. I definitely. mean, we both do, I mean, right? Because we're I both watch his content and you are, you're there. Always. Am I really? I don't watch his content unless someone, like, sends me something. And, like, even then, I don't really watch it, so I don't know. But he's he knows why he's upset, though. I know he knows. And I have guesses. But he would have to confirm them with me, which is why I wanted to talk to him. But I know he knows. And he, look, I don't want to send any fear out to him. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to tell your secrets. Like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying people who hate you who already know they're going to tell you, dummy. Like, I'm not going to be the one to do it. Your enemies will do it. And I'm not your enemy. I'm not even your friend at this point. I'm just a person who's like, hey, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but I just like, yeah. I want him to know, like, I think he's a good person in the same way. I think Sneeko's a good person. Mm -hmm. And I think he's upset about that. And I don't know why he, how he could... You're in your yeah. 30s and you're making the same mistakes someone in their 20s is making and you want more leniency. Why? You should have more responsibility. 
What are you talking about? And he also holds himself up to that standard. Doesn't he understand if he tells me I'm smart, I'm capable, I know what I'm doing, and I'm also doing these things over here. Now I'm like, oh, so you're like a bad guy. What are you exactly. doing? If you said exactly. I'm stupid, I'm a boy, I think with my penis, well, then I'm like, okay, maybe some leniency, I guess. Yes. So exa- so again, do you want me to treat you like Sneeko? Or do you want me to treat you like a grown-up? And that's the conundrum of being treated with responsibility. Now you have to be held to a standard. Mm. That's why it's so mm. scary to have these conversations or to act like we're better than everyone else because the moment you hold yourself to a standard, people are going to be watching for you. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. And so again, I'm not mad at him for being himself. I'm mad at him for being in denial of who he is in the anime. Yes. Because then he projects onto everybody else who they are. But I'm like, sir, what are we talking about? And that's the only frustration I have that I'm like, he can't be that shocked I was critical of him cheating. He cannot be that shocked when my whole shtick is consent. But he doesn't watch my videos, Z. He doesn't watch them. He only watches clips. No, he does not. He does not know the levels. He doesn't know my work. to engage. He isn't engaging. He's not seeing you. Which is fine, right? But like that's the thing is like what do we mean by friend when we're talking about a space where people only know you through content and not even your whole Mm. catalog? Mm. Just snippets of your content. True. And that's what I don't understand. I almost think like – see, Hassan played the game really well by pulling away because you can't win with someone who can't like – either play the game politically well or face themselves enough to have the redemption story. So like in some ways I'm like, should we all pull Hassan? But no, that doesn't make any sense for who I am as a person. I I don't want to play the political game. I don't want to play the game of only associating with people who make me look good. Yes. And that's Hassan's game. Mm. And I don't want to play that game. Lame. Very, very, very lame. So, yes. like, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, this space really is great for friends, but what is a friend? And how do you know if they see it in the same way as you? Obviously, right? Like, how do you know? And even if they say they see you, if they don't treat you the way, like, you know what I mean? There's, like, a confusion there. Or if they don't communicate with boundaries or they don't tell you, like, hey, I want to negotiate not to do this. I've had so many people in my DMs, YouTubers, who are like, hey, I saw you made contact content on me. Um, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. I was like, oh, cool. Do you want to negotiate the boundaries of how I'm supposed to do my job and be your friend? And then they just don't respond back. Oh. Be- and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with that? Not talk exactly. about you? Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do? I understand what they're saying. But like, we're also content creators. So like, I'm happy to negotiate it. But I have to know what the boundaries are. Otherwise, I'm so confused. Like, we all talk about each other. So I'm a little confused. And don't we want that? Like, Papa Gut's always, like, somebody review my videos. And, like, when I review yours and, like, you see it. Or, like, when I review, like, that's how we make connections. Mm. Precisely. Precisely. So I'm a little confused on, like, should we be? Is it better? Here's the question I've been asking myself. Should I focus on being a content creator and stop being friends with people? Ooh. And just be colleagues with people i've never been just colleagues with anybody what would it mean to just be colleagues like pure work hey i'm not interested in friendship i don't want to be called your friend i want to be co-workers purely i've never done that with youtubers it feels so unnatural that is also a unique thing about being a youtuber like that that's the really unique thing and if you take that away then what do you really have Except sort of like the rat race of just content, algorithm, brand. Yeah. Like that's what keeps me sane, I think. Knowing that there's like people on the other end, not just Mm. colleagues. People who I can have a conversation with. Whose DMs I can slide into. Yes. Hey, let's chat because this is bugging me about, you know, the space at the moment, you know. Right. Like, that's just, like, such, like, being able to just send you that email was, like, oh, my God. Like, you know, it was just great. Because, you know, I don't have, like, a boss who I can go to, like, when I have problems. Like, you know. HR. The CEO of YouTube now, not Susan anymore, but whoever has replaced Susan, like, hey, (laughs) let's chat because I'm having, you know, an HR problem. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, like, it's, it's the really 
I think it's the real, really exceptional thing. And like, if you don't have that, what do you have? Like, yeah. sort of like sucking the soul out of something. It's really, I don't like that personally. I don't like it either. No, I love knowing, gosh, there's nothing that makes me feel better than people seeing me make a harsh critique of them and them reaching out to me and saying like, hey, I want to talk to you about this in like a real way. And I see your point, but also I have some like pushback. I'm like, awesome, dude. Because like, I'm not perfect. But mm. also it it's like, a. to be fair, I have, this is, women and I have a good reputation with this. I feel like the female people I talk to, we mostly make it work better. But I think that's also because we're taught to in society and like patriarchy or whatever. But like it's easier for us, I think, to reach out and be like, hey, this kind of hurt my feelings. And I'm like, oh my God, my bad. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I think the men are just going to struggle in this space a little bit differently, especially in that particular space. I think it's going to be a little bit harder for them. But I'm wondering like how do we bridge this gap of misunderstanding when I want there to be something real about streamers. Also something professional about streamers. Also something with like dignity in streaming. Something. But it's like what's a colleague? Because if I worked a normal job, this happened to me with my old jobs. People would love to talk to me. They'd ask me about their problems. They'd tell me things. And now here I am knowing everything about everybody in the office. And I'm like, I, uh, okay. Like what do I do with this? And a big part of it is like, well, eventually they want you to take their side. And I'm like, oh. I kind of feel like we're all kind of like accidentally hurting each other for no reason. And then it's like, no, 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 take my side. And I was like, I, mm, I should not know any of this. But then I want to be there for people. And I want to be able to say like, yes, I can respond to your email. Thank you for reaching out to me and trusting me with this. But also I don't understand what I'm signing up for sometimes. But I always feel like I have faith that you'll just tell me what I'm signing up for. Mm -hmm. Just tell me what it is so I know what's going on. Like I don't feel very confused about our relationship. Mm. I thought I wasn't confused about other people's relationships, but apparently I am. But also, I think that there's a lot of confusion on everyone's end if you assume something of somebody. And I think that happens a lot in this space, especially if you've collabed like once or twice with a bigger content creator. You're like, oh my God, now they know who I am. But like, they might not know who you are mm. any more than anyone else does. You know what I mean? And so I think that's something you learn eventually. I just want there to be an option for us to say, like, maybe colleagues and not friends. But then that sounds so bitchy in this space. That sounds awful. Yes. It sounds so bad. It sounds it sounds so mean. It does. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. It sounds so bureaucratic and just so stale. It's right? Awful. I don't like that. No. I don't like it either. No. But it no. feels safer. It almost feels like let's be safer and say we're colleagues. But... But then it feels so wrong. It just it feels could work so, if we were yeah. better communicators. If we were better at like talking authentically with each other, which we are not. Yeah. I mean, I think I see this especially in like just bread tube and what it sort of mm -hmm. represents and sort of like the left. They just will not engage or talk to the enemies at all. It's all Agreed. based on assumptions. That's all. All it is. They won't reach out to anybody. And I think that sort of same thing of just not reaching out not actually talking but actually just going on assumptions about somebody based on like a clip that you yeah. see of them it's easier and it also means that you have control over a space that is actually completely uncontrollable and is just wild like the wild yeah. west it's crazy um and so it gives you a sense of okay i know what i'm doing here i know my purpose here i know what sort of my neighbors are or who they are and I have control as yeah. well. And so I think it, it's it's a weird kind of like attempt at survival, but it's also kind of self-sabotaging, like mm. in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Um, because you miss out on the true experience of what it is to like be here and you miss out on the, well, reality really. And I think people aren't actually as scary as we think they are. Like yeah. I always think just based on like my own my own barriers that I set up, like not talking to people. Like I know that Kyla is not like going to like end our friendship or our relationship. I know yeah. she, I know she isn't. I know if I actually just like spoke to her and just yeah. like wrote to her or responded to a message that it would be okay. And she'd be amazing and incredible. Yeah. But I'm just like stunted and comfortable in being stunted because then mm. it means that I don't have to like do the work um, or I don't have to face my fears. 
really. But yeah, yeah. Why do you know that about Kyla? I know that because of how we've interacted when we have and also how she interacts with other people and how I think also vulnerable she can be like after she spoke with Merck like yeah. she sort of like burst into tears and it like sort of was a, a real like the experience was a lot yeah. for her and when she spoke to you about it as well I sort of was like oh my gosh like I feel these things like as well like in certain yeah you know times in my life instances like this is so relatable like I I feel you like yeah so deeply and profoundly and I like know how you feel about these things and I can like sort of really I can like see you in this instance and so I know you you would be able to see me in this instance yeah so yeah yeah a lot of people really felt like they saw Kyla for the first time in that stream where they were like, okay, she was really upset with how the Merck conversation went. And I'm glad like she had privated that part of the – or members only that part of the stream and I'm a member of her. So I was like, well, I want to I want to see it. And I watched it and I know that it feels like she's beating herself up. But for people who don't understand her, that really humanized her and made them go, oh, she's not just like a condescending like educated person. She is a thoughtful, considerate, heartwarming, compassionate person who has feelings mm. like the rest of us. She just has like some language that makes it feel like she's disconnected, but she's actually very connected. She's just having like a moment of disconnection, a moment. It's just mm. a moment. And the moment's over. And now we're going to like try to rebuild to the best of our ability. But that's the thing is that I see those moments in people. and I'm like, oh, thank God. Okay. That is going to build the trust in them, you know, or even like I said on my stream with Rora, I was like, I'm never talking to this woman. And then we had a mutual, <laughs> we had a mutual reach out and a mutual of mine and ours was like, hey, like, um, she doesn't want to like break your consent and stuff, but I want to put you guys in like a group chat to talk about it because like she definitely hears you and she wants to talk to you and like go over some stuff. And I was like, oh fuck well I'm not trying to be mean so like yeah okay and so I was like yeah okay and then we got in contact we talked it out in private and I was like oh all right we're cool like no problem <laughs> and we'll talk about it on Thursday but it was like she made the effort she respected my boundaries and consent she like wanted to make sure I was good um our mutual was so nice and like could understand both of us he could see both of us and like bring us together to see each other it was like an amazing behind the scenes moment that I was like this is what I'm looking for in this space Mm -hmm. It's for people to see enough of each other to bring us together so we can build bridges instead of destroy them. And then we need a level of like vulnerability though, right? A level of, um, is it okay that like, hey, I'm kind of upset with this and is it okay that like I feel like I can defend this but also I'm pretty upset with how I, I was received. Like, because I know like a lot of the time when I'm upset with myself, I'm upset with how I was received. But I feel mm -hmm. like my message makes sense but I am upset with my my lack of communication, like my lack of skill when it comes to communicating, I get mm. so frustrated with myself. Where I'm like, say it better. Even my partner, he's like, I love you. But when you talk, sometimes it sounds like you're saying this, I zoo meat. And then I'm looking at everyone like, yeah. And he's like, no, you said nothing. Like in your head, you. I know what you're saying. I love you. I know what you're saying. You're not saying it that to the stream though. And I was like, fuck, even my own partner. <laughs> even my own partner and my sister's always said this about me she's like you make a lot of sense to people who get you but people who don't get you like they're gonna think you're saying something different and I was like how am I supposed to guess what people are hearing me like how am I supposed to know who's listening to me and so a part of you has to worry less about it and then a part of you has to be thoughtful enough to consider it yeah and that's like where I grow frustrated with myself because then I'm like where did I fuck up because I feel like what I was saying was so consistent with my work. Where did I fuck up? And then when people tell me, like, this is where you fucked up, I'm like, but they can't be it because other people get to do this. Why can't I do this? And then it feels dishonest, like I'm being somehow tricked. You know what I mean? But I know I'm not. I'm not being tricked, but I think something is not being honest here. Why am I being treated different than every other person? Mm. And that makes me think, like, why am I different? Am I special? Am I loved more? No, that can't be it. Am I a woman? Ew, misogyny? Is it misogyny? That sounds lame. If it's misogyny. There's something here. Why was I the only one treated differently? And then it makes me wonder, like, what did I do? But I mm. think what I did was not – I should have reached out to him that day. 
And I should have just said, I'll talk to you on stream, but I think we should take this in private. Mm. I really think we should take it in private because I'm confused on why you're upset. And then I just didn't want to get yelled at on stream with thousands of people watching when I was so confused about what was going on. Yeah. Sorry, I made this about me. <laughs> no, no, it's perfectly, it's perfectly understandable. It's so human. So human. Sorry. Thank you for like being here though. Look at I feel I feel so safe with your energy right now, girl. Oh good. I'm I'm glad. I'm so glad. Likewise. Likewise. What are you gonna do? Okay, I don't see any now everyone's just talking about friendship. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure there's another comment for you, but I wanted to ask you, like, how are you feeling? Is this the way you were hoping the conversation would go? Did we cover everything you thought to talk about? Is there anything else you want to talk about? Because I got the time, girl. <laughs> this has actually gone so much better than I thought it was going to go. Like, I didn't yeah. know what it was going to be. I was just like, I don't know. I was just watching your stream yesterday and you were talking about how Merck reached out to you. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know, like watching Merck and everything that she's been doing and like she's a firecracker and just everything that she's been talking about like if she can reach out to Britney then like yeah, yeah. like that's that's a good shout that's a good shout like I, I know that's a good shout so I was like okay I've got to do this and so I had no I did not know what this was going to be but this is like just lit like a little fire inside of me and I just like felt it growing throughout this conversation and that's like such a good thing and I'm like yes good. okay I'm going to like keep feeding this fire now and like thank you so much for like lighting it for me like seriously um, thank you so much. Literally I was so excited when I got your email it makes me so happy and so please message me literally anytime email me anytime and know that like okay you know and also like I'll, I'll DM you later I'll DM you something I'm going to tell you something but I'll DM you and I want you to know that like I am just so I'm equally a fan of your content as you seem to be of mine, but I have loved your last few videos, especially. We watched them on stream together. We talked about them. They were so good. So you oh, are, you, you so obviously much. belong in this space. Like you belong on the internet. You're so good at what you do. And if I ever see you doubt it again, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, you will. It's natural. <laughs> like You're so good at what you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Really, really, really do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, girly. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Reach out anytime. I guess with that, I'm going to take a little bit of break, guys, and then I'll come back. Thank you for being here, Z. Thank you for having me. I can yeah. now eat my dinner in like such joy. So thank you so, so much. Thank okay, you. And congratulations great. on your marriage and everything. Thank you. Your wedding dress. Oh my gosh. I'm oh, sorry. I love it. Oh my God. I still, I love it so. I'm going to wear it every three months. I swear. I'm not even kidding when I say that you are like the most beautiful bride I have ever seen. Stop like it. I saw your photo on Twitter and I was like. Stop. I love it so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank amazing. you. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. I cried Incredible. so hard. I was cried like a baby. It was great. It was a great day. Perfect day. That's good. That's Anyways. So good. All right, girly. We love you. Thank you for being here. Yes. Come back Thank anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs> My head in Miller Farm bed, my belly's being fed, and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then 